Technologies, 850-478-5270, or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Rolling Stone magazine failed to follow basic journalistic safeguards in publishing a since-retracted story about the alleged gang rape at a University of Virginia frat house. In its lengthy critique of the article conducted at the request of the magazine, the Columbia Journal Review said Rolling Stone's repudiation of the main narrative in A Rape on Campus is a story of journalistic failure that was avoidable. The failure encompassed reporting, editing, editorial supervision, and fact-checking. Led by the dean of the Columbia Journalism School, the review examined the editorial process behind the explosive story, which failed to hold up under a barrage of questions raised by other media after its publication in November. The article, written by Sabrina Rubin Erdely, gave a detailed account of a 2012 gang rape that a woman identified as Jackie said had endured at a frat house as a first-year student and accused the university of tolerating a culture that ignored sexual violence against women. In December, Rolling Stone apologized for discrimination did you know that 35% of high school girls report that they've only had sex with one or two partners a year instead of having the living shit f out of them by any guy they see? Did you know that only half of all 17-year-old males report f without a condom, even though it's really the only way to go? There are thousands of American teenagers today who are unaware of the full benefits of f***ing your brains out all day, every day. These otherwise average high schoolers haven't been taught about f***ing every chance you get, pounding each other dry and never ever pulling out. Every sexually active high school student should know this stuff. Ditch the condoms because it's always better raw. Stop worrying about STDs. F*** every chance you get. Just keep f***ing and f***ing and f***ing. Strangers, doesn't matter who. And most importantly, be direct with your partner about how badly you want to f*** their brains out. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can dial in toll-free here to join us and bring up anything you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. With you in the studio tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget to join us online over at freetalklive.com. The features we share with you are completely free. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. You can go there and create the content right there on the front page of the website. Just uh, submit what you want and then vote up what you like and vote down what you don't. If you feel so inclined, we'd appreciate it because it helps us know what you find interesting over at freetalklive.com. Dot com. Now, uh, you know, right before the show, usually we all kind of throw in what we want to talk about here on the air tonight. Because, uh, you know, it's our job as talk show hosts to come prepared. And sometimes we prepare independently. N none of us really ever talk about, you know, what we're going to discuss prior to just a few minutes before the show starts. And every now and then we all three of us will have the same story. And I think we all had the Edward Snowden bust story uh, yes. yep. In show prep for tonight. So here it is from RT.com. And there's a lot of different sources here. Honestly, I don't know which one is uh, is the best one. But usually RT does a good job of covering uh, the U.S. government. And, you know, they're fairly critical of them because, well, they're funded by the Russian government. Uh, but nonetheless, RT.com writes, New York City parks workers have covered up a statue of National Security Agency leaker Edward Snowden. That was secretly installed overnight. Oh, boy. That quick. Yeah, They pretty found it cool. that quick. The 100-pound... Well, I mean, it's cool that it was installed overnight. I thought you meant that quick as in it went up quickly. <laughs> well, I it mean, did it, go up quickly, but I was just nice. su surprised that they were able to figure it out. Because, I mean, people don't really pay attention to the the busts that they tend to walk by. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. Uh, well, I guess they must have had some sort of park worker that you know, noticed. Yeah. Maybe he's been paying attention. Well, I think you might notice just that something's where it wasn't before. Yeah. But if, for instance, you uh, took the, the head off of, um, you know, I don't know, John Jay, right, the bust off of the John Jay statue and then replaced it with an Edward Snowden statue, I think it would be there much longer. Now, I'm not suggesting vandalizing uh, you know, park equipment here. I'm just saying that... It's probably the fact that it appeared where well, it wasn't, where I nothing like what was. Derek J. used to say about that. It's not vandalizing. It's just improving. 
Yeah, you're adding art. What could be wrong with that? <laughs> In this case, this is not vandal vandalism. This is adding art. Uh, so anyway, he was installed overnight. It's a 100-pound bust. This thing is hmm. heavy. Uh, and it was erected in Brooklyn's Fort Green Park atop the prison ship Martyrs Monument. The four-foot-tall Snowden bust was fused to the monument overnight on Monday by a trio of anonymous artists and a few helpers. According to Animal New York, they renamed the tribute Prison Ship Martyrs Mon uh, Monument 2.0. Fort Greene's Prison Ship Martyrs Monument is a memorial to American POWs who lost their lives during the Revolutionary War. I guess I'm interested to see a before and after. I mean, what did this thing look like? Apparently, they did add him to some sort of a monument that already existed. I don't, I don't think that— A monument can be a bunch of monuments together, too. Yeah, that's a good so. point. So Derek J is showing me—oh, it's just like this flat— Surface thing, perfect to put a bust up on. Like oh, of, there you go. Sort of a somewhat tall. What would you say about eight foot tall? Maybe because it's taller than that cameraman. So seven. I'd or eight say feet it's about tall. ten feet. Then it's I'd a, say that that's an improvement to the 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 monument itself. Yeah. So then they they set Edward Edward Snowden's bust up on top of this fairly large kind of tall sculpture Cind thing. Cind cylinder. C cylindrical with a flat top. Column. Yeah. Perfect column. That'll describe it. The like uh, Greek columny thing. So they, uh, this is the group statement that put this up here. They're talking about this martyr's monument. It's a memorial to POWs who lost their lives during the Revolutionary War. We have updated this monument to highlight those who sacrificed their safety in the fight against modern-day tyrannies. Their statement continued to say it would be a dishonor to those memorialized here to not laud those who protect the ideals they fought for, as Edward Snowden has by bringing the NSA's Fourth Amendment violating surveillance programs to light. And to his own personal detriment as well, uh, like those many of those people who fought in the Revolutionary War, who put their, their lives and their property and their families' lives on the line to fight for something that they believed in. Edward Snowden basically gave up access to his own family and ended up being, you know, essentially run out of the country. Because, well, he'd probably be in a prison cell right now had he not left Hawaii, where he was living at the time, uh, right before this, the news about the Snowden revelations broke. So I fully support what they've done here. Yeah, it seems artistic. I, I, I like it. It's a tribute. And to those people who don't know of Edward Snowden, as they pass by in the park, perhaps they'll learn of him. There are a lot of people who don't know about Edward Snowden. I would be interested to see a public poll to actually find out how many people even are aware of Edward Snowden. I know I've talked to some people. I remember uh, talking to a cop in the park here uh, who had absolutely no idea who Edward Snowden or who Bradley Manning at the time well, was. Had he heard of the revelations, at least, the, the facts that had come out because of Edward <sighs> I Snowden? I didn't get into that much detail, but he's this is the kind of guy who pays no attention to the news, apparently. Like, I would he, think he did admit that. Even someone who hadn't heard anything of the news um, would hear of the NSA... I wonder reading about everyone's that. <laughs> emails and uh, collecting all sorts of private data. Going on with a statement from the artist, our goal, they say, is to bring a renewed vitality to the space and prompt even more visitors to ponder the sacrifices made for their freedoms. Mm. We hope this inspires them to reflect upon the responsibility that we all bear to ensure our liberties exist long into the future. And that's the end of their statement. Most passersby didn't notice the Snowden head on top of one of the four columns that lie at the monument's edge. Bucky Turco, who exclusively documented the installation, reported that. Uh, in fact, he said, quote, Over a dozen people walking their dogs passed by the new bust on Monday morning without noticing the unsanctioned piece. But sure. The color and design of the bust expertly matches the existing sculptures there, from its bronze patina finish to Snowden's hair, which mimics the texture of the feather on the eagle. <laughs> the, uh, the artist also added letters spelling out Snowden's name in an official-looking font, befitting of the monument, or of a monument. The artist told Turco they debated on how to bind the bust to its base, eventually deciding on an adhesive that would firmly hold the head in place yet could be removed without damaging Martyr's Monument 1.0, as they referred to it. The idea for the sculpture was conceived about a year ago by two NYC-based artists with a history of pulling off notable public interventions. Hmm. Now, I think the, the history is very interesting here, but of course it was what happened later on to the statue, and I don't know how much later it was, but I'm pretty sure it was the exact same day. Mm -hmm. uh, New York City Park Service removed the Snowden sign from the monument at 11.45 Eastern. They covered up the bust 
with a blue tarp just after noon on Monday. We That's don't want today. people looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they cover up the whole monument yeah. in order to prevent people from looking at the bust on top of it. Now, I think I saw some news that this uh, the bust has been removed completely at this point, but I have not yet verified that particular claim. Did either of you see uh, anything about that? That no, they've I, actually physically removed the bus. I rather can't than imagine they haven't. Yeah, uh, as of four hours ago, this is the the picture of the news reporter. I see. So the picture you showed us of the column was more recent. Yeah, than that the was one taken this morning. Yeah, that was just from a couple hours ago. Yeah, so it's it's gone. That's it. Yeah, at least it got some headlines and maybe got some people talking. But it's a shame. But I mean, it's uh, you know, therefore it's put together and uh, made eternal by the news stories, right? This is true. Yeah, there are pictures of it, so it already will live forever. I wonder who's going to get it, though. Are any who's of the get government the agents? Yeah, are they going to take it like, home? Yeah. Well, I Good removed question. it, Jim. I should take it home. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. It would have been interesting to uh, to follow the bus, like whoever it is that came out to remove whichever park crew. Yeah, it's uh, going to end up on eBay, I'm sure. Or what if the artists dressed up as government as agents <laughs> and removed it and just took it home? And then they could like, put it up right, somewhere else. We got our story, guys. Let's take it home. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. So I guess, you know, we'll see if it pops up again somewhere else. Because it's, <laughs> it's certainly, I mean, this is an expensive bust. It's uh, 100 pounds. But it, it might be interesting to make some cheap knockoffs. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, a much lighter version made of styrofoam or something like that. And then just put those up different places. But well, once you have the mold, can't you just make as many as you want? Well, that's what I mean. But it's well, yes, expensive but to have a hundred pound weight like this. Yeah, metal uh, molds are going to cost. It's going to cost more to make it out of bronze than anything else. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts. 855 450 free. More about Edward Snowden. If you've got comments on the bust. The illegal bust. You support the crackdown that happened today. You want to keep the word underground about Edward Snowden? I want to hear from you if you want to repress information. Free Talk Live. Going back to the my and thing, you cost me a lot of misery. And all total, $2,700 in doggy fees. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. Two pounds, three ounces, and my dog has been cured. Abby's a five-year-old silky terrier. She had, like, chicken pox on her belly, clusters of bumps on her back. And she was allergic to, like, 70-some-odd things. So the dermatologist, it was like, oh, yeah, just keep giving her needles every 10 days. But she's not clearing up. And then I, it came up on my radio, Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E. Com. 859-428-1000. And I was like, oh, that's it, that's it. I give her the Dynavite after five weeks. And one morning there was nothing there. And I'm like, oh, my God, she's all clear. There wasn't one blemish on her body. Her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. She is a healthy, bump-free, pimple-free, shiny, silky. It turned our lives around. So thank you very much for Dynavite. I couldn't be happier. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. dot com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, it's a process of elimination, and you're trying not to be eliminated. So here's a tip for making the cut, and this might seem subtle, but to the person interviewing you, it's not. There is a world of difference between applicants who convey, I need a job, and those who simply ooze, I want 
to work, especially in these lean times when many you're competing with will seem desperate in I'll take anything mode. If you convey specific interest in this job at this company, you will be conspicuous. Thus, the value of going to school on the company you're applying to before the interview. With money and attention so tight now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. In a desperate attempt to suppress freedom of speech, freedom of expression, to suppress The ability to get information out to people about uh, what has happened with the Edward Snowden revelations, of course, you know, revealing all manner of interesting things about how the NSA can basically spy on whatever it is you're doing uh, at their leisure. That's in case you were living under a rock and hadn't been paying attention to the Snowden situation. That's sort of what this bust was designed to do. These artists put up a 100-pound bust in a New York City park, and it was quickly noticed by park staff, uh, by the government agents. It was covered up and then ultimately removed. We'd love to hear from you if you want to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Now, it's not that I... uh, So so I I think that some of the language you've used around explaining it here might, uh, you know, sound a little one-sided, right? Like, so this is government property. The expectation is is the government approved... So it's public property when you say that, because public property... You wish it was public property. by everyone, so you should be able to put artwork up if you want. You wish it was that, but I think we all know that functionally that's not how uh, things work. For better or for worse, you can't just go put your art up on uh, government property, otherwise people... Government doesn't have property. It's a criminal gang, and criminal gangs can't own things legitimately Crim- so i criminal don't respect gangs i don't respect their property okay you may or may not respect them but that yeah. doesn't mean well, that we, i'm not going to talk into their paradigm i'm not going to use terms like government property if i can avoid it just i'd so rather call clear. it public property how Wait, about you derek jay i prefer the term government property really? and i prefer to stay off of it if i can because i do unlike you treat the government as if they own the property uh i know it's not legitimate but it's not legitimate when the government or when the mafia owns property either but i tr- i just I pretend like it is, you know, yeah. they, they or they'll kill me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, so. but but saying government property, you know, almost makes it seem like, you know, it doesn't have the same aspects that it should have. Right. I mean, in theory, public property, this idea of public property. Now, I don't support the idea of public property, but the concept exists. And, you know, in theory, people are supposed to be able to gather there. It's supposed to be sort of a traditional forum for free speech and expression. I mean, right. you have done no. protests yeah. and had yeah. dance parties on government property, a.k.a. public property. Well, I've learned enough through personal experience that public property is not government property. I've been banned from public schools for handing out literature. Mm-hmm. I've been banned from local parks for holding uh, free speech events and you said dance the parties. You, you found out that public property or you found out that government property is not public property That's yes excuse me if the, if i misspoke that's what i meant um because yeah i want to treat government property as if they own it because i want the government to treat my property as if i own it hmm. so you know if i expect them to stay off of my property then i will gladly <laughs> stay off of theirs well, that's an interesting uh, new uh, approach let's get back into that here in a moment but first we've got Corey on the line in st george utah Corey, you're on free talk live Hey, guys. Hey, you're on the air. 
Did you get to see John Oliver's uh, last week tonight, yesterday, or on the YouTube? Uh, yes. He did a whole thing on. He did a whole like thirty minute thing on Edward Snowden. It was very good, actually. I was quite impressed with like how he how he put it. And he went and you, just like your New York thing, he went and he talked to people in New York about the problems that about about Edward Snowden and who he was and. It was amazing. Nobody knew who he was. Really? People thought he was Julian Assange. People thought he was Julian Assange. People, nobody knew who he was. He basically did a whole, and they, and they didn't even do like a sample thing. It was 10 people, and some people thought he was Julian Assange. People thought he was, you no, know, he didn't. And but then, but then he went and they asked people, is it okay for the government to see you naked? If <laughs> you've <laughs> taken pictures in that, of that. And, then they're like, yeah, that's a big problem. That's a big problem that the government can see. That can, is, and that was something that was brought up. And he's like, well, maybe we need to put it to everybody this way. That government, they can, and they can spy on you in this way. And it was, it was very, it was very well done. I was very, in, it was very, very well done. I was very happy with how he did it. Actually. Excellent. I, I have not seen that, and I had meant to, you know, I saw the headlines. I actually bookmarked it here for the show uh, tonight. Didn't he actually interview Snowden in this piece? Yeah, he did. He did interview Snowden. It, it cool. was, a, I mean, he did give he did give some good criticisms. To Edward, he did give some criticisms of Edward Snowden, and I think that I think some of them are pretty, you know, warranted. I mean, because journal, journalists do screw up, and maybe Edward Snowden didn't do it right in that area, but I think... What did you feel, what did he feel that Edward Snowden did not do right? Well, there were things that were like, um, not that I don't think he did anything wrong per se, it's that people he trusted ended up like, they posted something in the New York Times that shouldn't have been posted. Um, Oh, as far as the the data that he released to these media agencies that you know, they were supposed to post only and certain the data. The, the media agencies screwed up themselves more than anything. Mm-hmm. But, and that, that was some of his criticisms. And, you know, I, I find those uh, semi-legitimate. I mean, you got to be able to control your the information a little bit better. But it's not, it's... It was it one of those criticisms? I mean, I'm sorry, I haven't seen the actual interview, and maybe, maybe it's worth playing on the air. I don't know, but uh, but was it one of those criticisms like, oh, well, there were personal information revealed in some of these government files, and you know, we don't want to reveal government agents' personal information, just the the truth about what was happening. Was it that objection? Because I've heard that before. It has a little bit of that to it. It it was more that it it did. It did put uh, some soldiers in harm's That's way. That's the one. The, yeah, the old soldiers thing. in harm's way thing. No, yeah. so it's the government that puts soldiers in harm's way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, first off, uh, the government puts soldiers in, in, in I mean, harm's I mean, way. On the air, though. Far more people have uh, have caught bullets in the name of, you know, for, from government putting them in har- harm's way than uh, activists, peace activists putting them in harm's way. But secondarily, no one's been able to show this dead soldier. No one's been able to say, this soldier here died because of this. Sometimes they can say the allies, right? Like, okay, the allies in this area or that area have had their names revealed and now they'll have um, things happen to them in this country or that country. But it really just shows bad immigration policy on the part of the United States. I mean, if these are allies in Afghanistan that have done provide substantial assistance to U.S. military, why the hell isn't U.S. military getting them a pass to come to the United States? I mean, that's that's pretty cheap to have somebody work for you. Just give them give them a visa and let them come here. Yeah, I have no problem with it, with these statements. Like I, have, I, I I don't mind the criticisms in that area, but it was actually quite a good overall piece cool. that went up and yeah. I, and. And I would, I'd recommend watching it on your own time. Well, thank you. And uh, uh, we will link to it here for our listeners to check it out. And I've actually pulled up an article that uh, is titled, John Oliver Makes Edward Snowden Squirm on Last Week Tonight. So maybe that'll give us a good summary here. Thanks for the call, Corey, and thanks for the heads up there. Also want to let you know about uh, the Pocket Power Plus. If you've got a smartphone, a laptop, you've likely found yourself in multiple situations where you wish you had a lot more battery power, like, you know, that you needed to charge it by the middle of the day. Uh, The Pocket Power Plus can help you with that and so much more. In fact, it's so powerful 
helpful that in some circumstances and it can actually jumpstart a car. Uh, the Pocket Power Plus really does fit in one's pocket. You can also, of course, stow it in your glove box. It comes with an accessory pack, which is has almost all of the adapters you could possibly need for this thing to, again, charge all kinds of electronic devices. And it even includes the jumper cables. You can run electronic devices for hours, even days, if you need to with the Pocket Power Plus. What you do to get it at half price is go to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. You can also use coupon code FTL and you'll save even more at PocketPowerPlus9.com. We'll continue here with more Free Talk Live. In moments, share your thoughts on Edward Snowden at 855-450-FREE. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Free Talk Live. This was the quote from the DEA's paperwork. Only products that were primarily intended or designed for use in injecting, ingesting, inhaling, or otherwise introducing marijuana and injecting other controlled substances marijuana? into the, the human body. Injects marijuana. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how out of touch these people are. They're trying to make it look like marijuana users are strung Injecting out junkies. heroin junkies. <laughs> right. And it's just not true. No. Look, if you were to ever even try to put <laughs> plant material mm. in a syringe and inject that into your veins. It's going to go poorly for it's you. It's going to work <laughs> once. <laughs> You're going to get high one last time if you even, <laughs> if you even make it to that point. Yeah. That's I mean, <laughs> not a good idea. Never in the history of marijuana consumption has anyone ever injected it into their veins. <laughs> yeah. Kids don't try that at home. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who hey, hey, hey. do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Hey, 
855-450 free is the toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. With you in studio, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Our listeners have been raving so far about Cameron Hughes wine, Mark. Yeah, we and for good reason, too. We had a uh, wine tasting here with the Cameron Hughes wine. We're going to have another one, and, too. Yeah, we, we are. I'm going to have another one. It's going to be awesome. I'm I'm excited. And these wines were awesome. They were they tasted great. Uh, they were so much better than sort of the cheap bottles of wine <laughs> that, uh, you know, maybe I've experienced uh, most of the time. Uh, what they did, what they do is, is uh, Cameron goes to these high-end vineyards, mostly in Napa Valley, Valley, but to some extent around the world, and he buys their overage, and then he labels it himself, and you know, so you can't tell where it came from. But these bottles are like ninety points and above. They're seventy to a hundred dollar bottles of wine that he sells for between ten and twenty five dollars. There's huge discounts on these bottles of wine, and you can get uh, an even bigger discount. He's got uh, if you use coupon code FTL, what you have to do is go to chwine.com. Click on the microphone in the upper left-hand corner and type in FTL. FTL is in Free Talk Live. And you can save uh, 40, uh, 20% off of uh, many of their select brands there and get free shipping on everything. So free shipping's on everything and a 20% on some selected uh, wines uh, with ju- using coupon code FTL by going to chwine.com, clicking on the microphone in the upper left-hand corner, ending, entering FTL at chwine.com. There's more to say about Edward Snowden, the bust, 100 pounds bus that was put up in a New York City park overnight and is now already, it's already been taken down by government agents who are attempting to suppress free speech and artistic expression. Derek Jay says he would respect the government's rules about their uh, their parks. I, w- I want to talk to you more about that. Maybe I've misinterpreted uh, what you've said, Derek Jay, because I'm, I'm shocked Shocked to the mm-hmm. core oh, uh, by what I've heard here, uh, here, <laughs> and we're going to get back into that. Also, uh, the interview with Edward Snowden, John Oliver interviewed him, and uh, one of our listeners gave us a heads up a moment ago. I've got an article about it, but first, let's go to Glenn. He's in Philly. Glenn, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Uh, good evening, go ahead, everyone. Um, yeah, yeah, about the bus thing. Um, uh, you know, it's interesting. This is I, I prefer the model that says, like, you know, public public property with some government management. I'm not inherently an anarchist or libertarian to the point that I don't think it's good to have small local government that sets some standards and operates things. I used to like to walk my dog in a nice local park that uh, has fountains in the pond and stuff, and there's there's government involvement in that, and it's not oppressive and everything, and they keep the place nice. Um, but if everybody and their brother wants to put up, you know, one guy wants to put up a bust of J.S. Bach, and another one wants to put up a bust of Krishna, and another guy wants to put up a bust of Stephen Tyler. Pretty soon, everybody's going around to put up, well, I want to express my preference, you know. This is and the then, tragedy you know, the of problem. the commons. Right, well, you know, it's, uh, right, and it's so, um, you know, it, uh, like, I wouldn't even mind if somebody, you know, set up a table uh, for a few hours on a Saturday, and with a bust of Stephen Tyler on it and a mm-hmm. little pamphlet telling you about the wonder, you know, how wonderful the guy is. Well, another guy has his table for <laughs> Thomas Alva Edison, and, you know, and it, it's fine. Um, but, but I mean, there's you're putting something with that permanence. It, it, it messes up uh, the aesthetic, okay? Let's say you're mm-hmm. trying to maintain a commons for it with, an, with a decent aesthetic that everybody can enjoy with that. If you go to the park to... You know, to walk your dog or fish. But or, why should know, the government bureaucrats parade. get to decide what's aesthetically pleasing? I mean, obviously they don't agree well, that an Edward Snowden bust is very okay, pleasing. Should, okay, in in my area, okay, we have hundreds of thousands of people that live around here, and you know the park is a given size. Okay, why should a handful of people who wish to express themselves? To gum up. I mean, the, the whole aesthetic of uh, things could be gummed up. You well, know? You, why don't you when just I, go and clean it up then, Glenn? I mean, if you feel like it needs well, to be improved, you can go and no, remove no, the bust. I'm talking about the litter. I'm talking about, no, no, no. I'm talking about, I can't, I'm not going to, I don't have to, I can't, I w- you know, I wouldn't be able to eject someone. In other words, huh? like you can't, if, if you always have this minority of people who are, are you know, with, yeah, Express screw the minority. Why should they be able to do anything? Okay, huh? so Glenn, no, no, Glenn, you've fallen into the trap. You're you're like you're like the uh, the, the prehistoric creature going around in the tar trap. pit. I don't know yes, what you're you are. About. Right. So Glenn, the fact is is that Ian wants to figure okay. out ways. And I'm, I'm called for. 
it, Glenn, I just want to explain something to you. So Ian wants to make it so parks are not functional, right? Like it, that is his goal. And you're trying to figure out how to make parks functional. You can't speak to someone who wants to make parks unfunctional. What are you talking That's about? That's what you want. You want that is not true the absolute, at all. One hundred percent. I just want to take down that damn war statue in the central square of right. Keene, New so Hampshire. That's Let's my put up Edward Snowden instead. That's my statement yeah. to you, Glenn. I'm deeply offended See, by these uh, these statues to war that populate most parks fine, in, in America. Too. Fine, I mean, I have no statues to war. Okay, like for example, we have a neat local park, and it's run by the very nice Township Municipal Building. It has a pond and fountains in it. A little stream runs through it. A dog park. And people go there and they have picnics, there's a gazebo. It's nice, it's aesthetically beautiful, and anybody who wants to come can enjoy it without being reminded of any wars or uh, societal heroes or you know anybody's favorite. What about anybody. a topless it's woman? A, Should they be uh, not reminded of a topless woman in the park? Uh, yeah, I, I would uh, think that's not, I don't consider that. Yeah, see, it's all like about you, Glenn. It's, it's all about what you think is aesthetically not. pleasing. I Immaturity. It's all about me. What's Listen, immature? Like, being Fine. topless? I mean, yeah, being topless is immature. I oh, disagree. It's a way to keep cool. Like, uh, I mean, it's, not, it's narcissistic. It's narcissistic. And if you ever talk to I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's, un, it's even un, uncomfortable in to a lot, to a lot of women. A lot of people I, I saw an article yeah. recently that said, that said that uh, the, the tendons in the breasts actually became strengthened uh, uh, by now. Look at how you hijack the topic. You know, you're like, oh, let's give them something really challenging. We'll talk yeah. about topics. Well, challenging is what we do here on Free Talk Live. Um, I mean, you know. Right. Buy your own piece of property, put up whatever statue you want. That's what I want the so government no to do. To see it. Thanks Buy for the their call, own Glenn. piece of property, spend their own money to put up their own statues. Yeah, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, just too much shouting in the, into the microphone, too much distortion. Couldn't couldn't handle it anymore. But, you know, you can buy your own piece of property, but then no one will see your damn statue. So uh, the government's got the monopoly over the best piece of uh, acreage in town here in Keene, New Hampshire. Central Square, I mean, it's the that's the best place if you want something to be seen by people. There constantly cars driving by, constantly well, people walking through the park, having lunch, taking the family through the park. If you want something to be seen, uh, if you want to make a performance So uh, I disagree piece, with that completely. That's Ian. where you go. Um, the fact is, is this is about funding, and you're making it about something else. So if the government decides about? to give... Uh, well, I'm going to tell you. Right. That's what I do for a living. If you just be quiet for a second, I'll do it. So um, if the government goes ahead and gives some private organization Central Square and says... You are now to maintain this and call it the Central Square Betterment Foundation or something. And they go ahead and they, they it's a private organization. They pay to, to mow the grass and take care of the flowers. Mm -hmm. It really wouldn't be that much, right? Like Central Square was set aside before there was really a city for being Central Square. There's no real cost to people for the land. Yeah, you could say that somebody else should be able to buy it in an auction. But if the government wants to give it away to somebody so that it continues to be Central Square, then you wouldn't really have an argument with that. And they would probably keep their statue on that property because that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And then you would have no right in a libertarian world to go put your statue there. This is really just sort of about ownership and the funding of like who mows the grass. We're not even talking about that much money here. The amount of money that goes into keeping Central Square working in Keene, New Hampshire or any other park in any other place isn't that much. Yeah, I agree with that. It's about being the owner of a thing that gives you the um, the right to decide what happens to it. Yeah, no and doubt. No one owns the parks as far as I'm concerned. Well, so then you, you put... don't have a right to decide what happens there, right? Well, sure you do. You can homestead. You oh, homestead okay. that land. Yeah. Remember, uh, a... there was years ago, Anarcho Jesse, one of the earliest movers here uh, to New Hampshire, he's since moved out, but... Uh, he went and there was a controversy within town where the government was going to give taxpayer money to some kind of a community garden research project. Mm -hmm. So they weren't even planting the garden at this point. They just wanted to research putting a garden together. And so they you know, granted them like 5,000 taxpayer dollars for this. This is just some group that wanted to build a community garden. And so Jesse said, well, why don't we just go ahead and build the community garden rather than getting government money for this? We'll go down to Central Square. He brought out some of his gardening tools and attempted to plant his own garden and was arrested for his efforts trying to improve this, what I consider to be unclaimed land, trying to homestead it and uh, put something there for the betterment of the community. Your, your thoughts are welcome. It's Free Talk Live. 
For over 20 years, you've trusted Lumber Liquidators to make high-quality, beautiful flooring affordable for everyone. Delivering this value means you get the floor you want at the low price you deserve. So we've lowered prices even more. This week at Gorgeous Hand Scraped Bamboo, it's durable, beautifully textured, and now it's $179. That's 40% off our already low price, plus 200 styles of pre-finished hardwood from $169 and 12-month special financing. You trust our value. We value your trust for quality hardwood. See the flooring experts today. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Here's a breaking medical legal alert. Attention, users of the diabetes drug Actos. If you or a loved one has taken Actos, then developed bladder cancer, or if a loved one has died from bladder cancer after taking Actos, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation from the pharmaceutical giants who made these drugs. Our experienced attorneys are dedicated to help you get the money you're entitled to, but time may be running out on this opportunity. So you must call today. The information is free. There are no fees unless Unless we win your case. If you or a loved one has developed bladder cancer or something worse after taking the diabetes drug Actos, call right now and learn your legal rights. This is an advertisement not valid in all states. I am a paid non-attorney spokesperson. Call the tort attorneys 24-7 right now. 800-430-7924. 800-430-7924. That's 800-430-7924. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Welcome back to more Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. You can dial us up here toll-free and join us at 855-450-FREE. And again, that's 855-450-3733. And don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like Free Talk Live and you enjoy what we're doing here and you want to help spread Free Talk Live, get us on more radio stations, you can become an amplifier for as little as $5 per month over at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote, and the idea is your 5 bucks a month is invested into Free Talk Live so we can get on more radio stations, bring more Internet listeners on board. We're the number 38, uh, no, number 38 most important talk show 
hosts, if you will. They, they don't say most important talk shows. They say the most important talk show hosts. So I want to make sure. Yeah. Um, so we're at number 38. Mark, you and I are on that list at number 38. Basically, me really old picture. Right? It's getting it's getting uh, kind of uh, makes me feel bad when I see a picture that's 10 years old of us up there. The fact <laughs> is, we wouldn't be on that list. I don't think if it weren't for the AMP program, because it's because of the AMP program is why we've been able to advertise in Talkers magazine for close to a decade now. Uh, I think we started advertising in there like eight years ago, and we've been going to their uh, conventions in New York City when they hold them. So we'll be going to another one in June where we get to kind of schmooze it up with the radio industry big wigs. And, and that's important because it helps us sort of be the who's who in, in the industry. It makes it it raises our profile, makes stations more likely to take Free Talk Live seriously and more likely to put us on the air. So you can help us with that by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. And you get perks like access to the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only forum, the amp-only Facebook group, uh, and more. Go to amp.freetalklive.com to get signed up. And thank you for doing so. That's amp, A-M-P, dot freetalklive.com. We've been talking about the Snowden bust which was put up in a park in New York City overnight. It's gone already. They targeted it with a tarp earlier this morning and have since removed the entire 100-pound sculpture uh, from the podium uh, upon which it was sitting, this column that was already there, a uh, sculpture that had already existed in the park. A now, I, you know, when when you when we talked about this in the last segment, uh, we were sort of talking about how, uh, well, it's impractical to let people do whatever they want to do on public property because we have to set things aside for different things. And I thought that it was really, um, it reminded me of the diggers. Uh, these are part of the right. lev the leveler movement, and I wanted to bring this up because I think it's they? important. This is during the English Revolution. During the English Revolution, there weren't really that many shots fired. This was when the king went down. Cromwell was uh, took over power as uh, you know the I can't remember what the keeper or whatever uh, he was. I can't remember what the terminology was. Um, and then the king's returned like a decade and a half later or something like that. Anyway, um, during that period, it's called the English Revolution. And there were a lot of weird groups that popped up. Uh, the Quakers came out of that. The Shakers came out of the Quakers. Um, they were called the Levelers, the, uh, the Diggers, and a variety of other groups. What the Diggers wanted to do was use public land, which was by public land, what they mean is you know, those in power, the autocrats, mm -hmm. uh, took land that they wanted and did what they want with it um, and made it That's difficult. That's what governments do. Yeah, made it difficult for poor people. Um, you know, land is becoming scarce. Poor people don't know what to do. Uh, there's not that much. Uh, in the 1640s, it's, diff you know, the, the America so far away and so deadly um, living on the frontier that people couldn't even get over there. They'd have to live in indentured servitude for 10 years before they could uh, get a piece of land. So they, they're like, we should be able to plant here on this land that you're not doing anything with. You're you know, your jousting tournaments aren't important. We need to be able to grow some food or whatever it is um, that they were doing on the, the public land. I don't know uh, specifically. And these levelers, you know, if, if you care about history, there's a lot of history sort of arguing about what uh, public property should be done with, and I think it's uh, it's really cool. The best example I was talking with uh, Derek so did about. Did they get arrested and, and things like that? Oh yeah, these efforts? people got all kinds of terrible things happened okay. to them uh, to them in these circumstances. Drawn and quartered. Yeah, all that kind of awful stuff oh, that my. they would do to people like that. Mm -hmm. But um, the best the the, the best uh, piece in in movies that you'll see is the Monty Python's uh, Search for the Holy Grail when the yeah. king comes up and he finds this. He goes, "This old woman, old woman." And he says. I'm 39. And, uh, it, well, I didn't know you were 39, and I couldn't just call you man, now could I? And he says, well, you could have called me by my name. Well, I didn't know your name. You, you didn't bother to ask now either, did you? And this whole that whole mm. skit where, um, you know, they're talking about their an anarcho capital uh, anarcho uh, syndicalist, syndicalist. Yeah, yeah, commune, and that that they the the executive is held by one week, and they have biweekly meetings where they you know have to uh, approve the rules and all this stuff that goes into that skit. I think it's one of the most brilliant skits they did. I mm. I enjoy just watching it every once in a while. But at the end, he, he does my favorite line, which is, oh, look, oh, look, see the, come see the violence inherent in the system. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. But those people would be best described as diggers. Okay. Uh, uh, because you, you remember the one part in it where the one, the, what actually was an old woman, she says, oh, come look, I found a lovely place of filth. Right? Like she's actually digging in the ground. So uh, these geniuses that did Monty Python, and you can see it um, all through their stuff, they w research everything. These guys are 
you know, sheer geniuses mm. in their um, comedy, they're referring to this old English revolution thing that most American audiences have no clue what went, went on. So there you go. Look up the diggers. You might enjoy huh. it. Yeah, because we were talking about Anarcho Jesse, who was arrested in Keene years ago. One of the first instances of civil disobedience uh, that happened out here. I mean, I guess one of the first dozen. And uh, and he was arrested for it. I was there to document the entire thing. And I thought it was a poignant protest. I mean, because he, you know, they were t- taking government money, taxpayer dollars, and they were uh, giving that to, uh, you know, to an interest group. And, I, and again, I maybe even calling it government money is, I think, not appropriate. I mean, they're taxpayer dollars. It's not the government's money, even though they've taken it from from people. It's still your money, essentially, because you know, just because a, a thief steals your bicycle doesn't mean that the it's the thief's bike anymore. It's still your bike. He's just possessing it. So I think it's important how uh, how you address things. To What's come back the money around. spent though? There's not much that can be done. Well, that's true. There's no doubt about that. I, I mean, I, and it, generally, once it's taken, there's not much that can be done. But you can do what you can to reclaim some value from the state. And I think being able to put up a Snowden bust and to uh, set up your own garden on public land is within that realm of re- yeah, reclamation. But, but uh, Anarcho Jesse had no expectation that his garden was going to go anywhere. They arrested him before he could put a hoe in of the course. ground. Yeah. If you want to see a picture. Of no, I think he did put some, a hoe in the ground. And see some of his activism. You can go ahead and just search flag burning <laughs> um, on Google Images, and the fifth uh, image, is it the fifth image, one now? Sixth image that you see will be Anarcho Jesse nice. standing in front of the war monument with a burning flag. That this was guy, great. you know, not a genius when it came to uh, the opposite. Terrible, divisive activist, in my opinion. Yeah. Speaking of tactics. Uh, is it my understanding that Anarcho Jesse also brought a rifle for his? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, his, we should have mentioned that his yeah, gardening right. activism. Yes, yeah, he wanted yeah, to yeah, shoot the gophers in case so they popped up. What a yeah. mixed message that is. You know, there was a quote from I don't know where is it the Bible where they says uh, turn your um, swords into plowshares. Yeah. Well, it seems like a mixed message to bring both. Oh yeah, definitely. And it was a sloppy bit of the. Uh, it was a sloppy bit of activism because the what he did with it was he arrived on the scene immediately propped his rifle up against a tree and proceeded to walk, you know, 10 feet away from it, basically abandoning it to whoever might want to walk up and pick it up. Uh, and then, you know, put his hoe in the the ground, and then the police officer who was there before Jesse arrived, basically. Yes, because it was planned activism. Uh, right, because we had announced in advance that this was going to happen. He then arrests Jesse. And I always love to talk about the rifle part of this, because even though I thought it was sloppy on his part to do that, it was a mixed message, and some kid could have picked it up or whatever, right? Like, it's kind of a dangerous thing to just leave a gun in a park. Very poor uh, strategy. Like that. But, you know, to to Maxfield's credit, Maxfield being the law enforcement officer who was there on the scene to enforce in this particular day, uh, to Maxfield's credit, he actually asked me whose gun that that was. And and I told him it was, you know, I, it was Jesse's. To the best of my knowledge, that's his. And uh, he said, well, you know, I, and I said, you want me to take care of it or something like that? And he was totally fine with me just taking this rifle cool. and walking away from the scene with it. Instead of like in most places where Jesse would have gotten an extra crime or, you know, an extra three charges or something like that. One yeah. for having a gun in certain jurisdictions, two for letting it go out of your control. Uh, I mean, I don't know if that's a charge, but it probably is in some places. Uh, and and so I actually got to just walk away, toting this rifle, and then put it in the trunk of my car and drove off with it. So New Hampshire, man, there's some really cool things about New Hampshire. And yeah, the law enforcers here sure are different. They treat firearms very differently. Yeah, they, well, they, they like them typically here in New Hampshire. I mean, I'm sure that's not true of all law enforcement in New Hampshire, but generally— a uh, law enforcement officer in New Hampshire is likely, if they're going to ask you about your gun, it's because if they have a genuine interest in seeing what kind of gun you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. You can be part of the Free State Project by going to sign up at freestateproject.org, but uh, no guarantees as to who else is going to sign up. Also, one of my favorite parts of the Outlaw Gardener was uh, when I arrived, Maxfield was already there, and he actually waited as I got my camera out and got it started, you know, got it set yeah. up and turned it on and started recording. He stood there and waited, and then we started walking together. Together as he was walking towards the park and I was interviewing him and talking to him so you know he could have beat me to it and could have just arrested Jesse maybe without even me right. being able to but he waited around really power things up so he did it for the cinematic uh, effect which yeah. is really cool that's courteous God bless him <laughs> 855 450 free. You can take control of the airwaves here. Uh, bring up whatever's on your mind. We can talk more about public property and Edward Snowden or whatever's on your mind coming up on Free Talk Live in hour two next. 
Indefinite <laughs> extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam. My best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. Geico Motorcycle presents Reflections from the Road. Let me tell you, the road is a much more relaxing place since I switched to Geico Motorcycle Insurance and started saving money. With that taken care of, now I can think about deep, important things. Like how come it's a pair of pants when there's only one of them? A real brain teaser. But hey, at least saving money with Geico Motorcycle is as easy as pie. What does that mean, anyway? Geico Motorcycle Insurance. See how much you could save. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, April 6th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,219 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $258. Antiwar.com reports, talking to the major American networks yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continued railing against the Iran nuclear framework deal and reiterated his determination to try to kill it. Netanyahu has repeatedly talked up sabotaging the nuclear negotiation on Israeli media, but this was the first time he was so overt about leading the anti-diplomacy push on U.S. media. He tried to present the push against the current deal as a push for a better deal, though that hypothetical deal that Netanyahu might accept is so far-fetched, U.S. officials say it wasn't even worth bringing up at the talks to the Western nations, let alone Iran. As it stands, however, Israel appears to be inconsolably outraged about the deal and is gearing up its powerful lobby to another run at the U.S. Congress with an eye towards getting legislation passed that would effectively sabotage the ongoing talks towards a final deal. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports Tesla Motors announced it broke a company record for the first quarter of 2015 by delivering 10,030 vehicles soon after West Virginia banned sales of its vehicles. The record was broken through a 55% sales increase for the same period from the previous year. Tesla also announced it will deliver sales information three days after the end of each quarter instead of waiting 40 days when the company is required to file them to the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission. The company expects to sell 50 55,000 cars in 2015, up from the 31,000 vehicles they delivered the previous year. Tesla has had trouble turning a profit in previous years, losing $294 million last year, $74 million in 2013, and $396 million in 2012. Tesla's first quarter financial report should be filed in May. 
Additionally, direct sales of Tesla vehicles were banned in West Virginia on Friday by Governor Earl Ray Tomlin after he signed a bill into law that stated an automaker may not act in the capacity of a new motor vehicle dealer. Tesla is banned from selling its vehicles directly in at least four other states. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Rolling Stone magazine failed to follow basic journalistic safeguards in publishing a since-retracted story about the alleged gang rape at a University of Virginia frat house. In its lengthy critique of the article conducted at the request of the magazine, the Columbia Journal Review said Rolling Stone's repudiation of the main narrative in A Rape on Campus is a story of journalistic failure that was avoidable. The failure encompassed reporting, editing, editorial supervision, and fact-checking. Led by the dean of the Columbia Journalism School, the review examined the editorial process behind the explosive story, which failed to hold up under a barrage of questions raised by other media after its publication in November. The article, written by Sabrina Rubin Erdely, gave a detailed account of a 2012 gang rape that a woman identified as Jackie said had endured at a frat house as a first-year student and accused the university of tolerating a culture that ignored sexual violence against women. In December, Rolling Stone apologized for dis discrepancies in the account and admitted that it never sought comment from seven men accused for the alleged rape. The Columbia Journalism Review had previously cited the article at the top of its list of the worst journalism of 2014, faulting Erdely for failing to check Jackie's account against other sources, including her alleged attackers and three friends who were depicted as unsympathetic towards her. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Now, a lot of little girls do ballet even though their fathers couldn't care less and don't see what the big deal is. But one talented little prodigy actually choreographed a whole ballet that her father could enjoy and even look forward to. Let's meet Erin Kemper and her father, Jack. Hi. Thanks for having us. Erin, how did you do that? I thought about all the things that my dad likes to watch and put it into a ballet. Well, we have a special treat for you today because Erin is now going to perform her new ballet. When I pay the bills, I get to make the rules. We can't afford that. World War II. I miss your mother too, but we're gonna have to do the best without her. Oh, Redskins! Bravo! Well done. Boy, I wish she were mine. You know, my two girls are grown up, but you still couldn't pay me to watch one of their a cappella shows. <laughs> what inspired you to create this amazing ballet? I'm really inspired by the theme of my dad paying any attention to me at all. Now, at the end, I hear she just put the game up on the big screen. I don't know where she gets it. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. The Edward Snowden bus that was put up this morning and during the overnight hours in New York City is already gone with the government agents going to cover it up earlier today and now removing it entirely. It brought up a larger discussion about public property and, you know, what sort of right, if any, do people have to go there and put something of uh, an art installation like this, which was a semi-permanent. Uh, I mean, they, they used an adhesive to adhere the 100-pound bus to the top of a cylindrical column which had a flat top on it of a sort of a war memorial that was already there memorializing the Revolutionary War. So you're welcome to share your thoughts with us on those things or whatever's on your mind. Coming up here, uh, Derek J is going to be telling us about a man who's in prison, the guy who video recorded the murder of Eric Garner, the guy who was allegedly selling cigarettes in New York City, was choked to death, I think it was this summer? Yes. This fall? Uh, sometime this summer by a New York City police officer. That man who's recorded that is now in a prison cell, and he is on a hunger strike because he thinks they are trying to poison him in the jail. So we'll uh, tell you more about that. Derek, you have the story. We'll also go to your calls and thoughts here at 855-450-FREE. Let's go first to Mike, listening in Ithaca, New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mike. Hey, guys. Hey there. I just... I just wanted to put on the radio that you guys had mentioned on the podcast that you'd be willing to let people 
who had donated a thousand dollars to your Africa satellite campaign to uh, come and be on the show with you. Uh, not or, to be on today. the show, but to sit in the studio. Yeah, um, if yeah. you so the this uh, campaign is uh, you go to africa.lrn.fm and the intention is to put us on the satellite, the free to air satellite uh, for covering basically the continent of Africa, more or less. And the most of it. Yeah, the intention is just to bring these ideas, the ideas of liberty, to people who are you know on the African continent, likely not going to have the money um, to, uh, to to pay for it or the interest in in that case because you're trying to convince people of the ideas of liberty, so they probably don't have the interest today. Um, and that that's the intention is people want to get behind it we'd be happy to let uh you know somebody who donates a thousand dollars to putting it us up on the satellite there because it's probably not going to pay itself back from a advertising standpoint so this is much more of a fundraiser thing if you give a give us grand yeah absolutely come sit in the studio watch us do a show i'll um, I, I, i'll wear a clean shirt <laughs> I wanted to ask if that offer would end up being extended to, uh, what is it, Dave in Arizona, if he gave you $1,000? James? James? Oh, you mean James uh, James in Arizona? Oh, boy, yeah. you're really testing my, uh, my my limits here, man. Well, I, it would be hard next, to imagine that like, James in Arizona would give $1,000 to come in here. But, I mean, I guess, you know, if for whatever reason we felt really uncomfortable, we'd offer the person their $1,000 back if it was somebody who we felt – you know, we, for whatever reason, did not want to allow in here. Uh, but, Mark, I guess it would kind of be up to you. I'd take his money and, you know, have him sit here. I wouldn't let him use the bathroom or anything like that. But He can come on a Friday <laughs> when I'm <laughs> off. Oh, when you're not here. Okay. There you we, go. We can start a Indiegogo campaign to get him on. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. You uh, probably have to give him a plane ticket, too. Yeah, there is that, too, because whoever it is, if you if you do the $1,000 donation at africa.lrn.fm, and by the way, I haven't updated the perks. I'm going to be changing the perks around to reflect the this information that we just sort of basically talked about last night on an after show that only only was heard by our podcast listeners. So you're, you're referencing something that we didn't really go into detail on on the air and, until just now. So I will update the perks on the site, but one of the requirements of this deal is that you also have to cover your own costs. So, you know, if it's a bus ticket, plane ticket, hotel, whatever it is you need to get to Keene, New Hampshire, to get physically to the studios and return from to your home, uh, that also would be something you would have to cover the cost for. Yeah, it seems more than reasonable that if it, uh, uh, a grand would be great, you know. Five grand seemed like a little much. Okay, well, thanks but for the feedback on that. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I appreciate that, Mike. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll actually get somebody to bite on this. Cool. So, yeah, he's talking about the African Satellite Fundraiser, which is going on now and has about 40, 41 days left. Uh, we're only at about 10% of the ultimate goal of $22,000. And you know what? Uh, there was actually a donation that came in from Akko in Cameroon. Whoa. Uh, he just sent me messages on Facebook. Cool. And it's interesting because... Uh, when Akko first started calling from Cameroon and we you know, got to know him and what life was like somewhat there in Cameroon and had those conversations with him, uh, we ended up putting a fundraiser together for Akko where listeners were able to donate uh, cash, or, you know, Federal Reserve notes, and also uh, Bitcoin to Akko. And we raised about $150 in cash. And we sent that via Western Union to him, which was very, very helpful for him. He said he'd never had that much money in his entire life and was wow. super grateful and actually put some of the money towards installing a, at least one satellite system for somebody in Cameroon. Wow. Um, and and th then he got all this Bitcoin as well. And I don't remember what the... I'm sorry, I don't remember how much Bitcoin it was, but I would say it was probably close to half a Bitcoin or something like that. And, he, of course, he didn't know what to do with the Bitcoin in that... Cameroon has very, very low internet access. There's not a, a lot of Bitcoin penetration there at all right now. There's no real reliable method to take Bitcoin and convert it into the Swiss franc, uh, which is what the national currency is there, as I understand it. And so he's sort of sitting on the, this Bitcoin and he didn't really know what to do with it. And I said, well, just hold on to it. You know, you never know when it's going to come in handy in the future. Maybe you'll want to buy something on Amazon or something like yeah. that. There may be something and, and maybe, you know, some sort of new Bitcoin innovation will come to Cameroon at some point, hopefully. I know there are groups actually in the Bitcoin universe that are working on that. We actually Hard, heard, we yes. heard from one of them today, as a matter of fact, off the air. And uh, so now he's taken some of the Bitcoin that people donated to him, and he's actually donated it back How to nice. the satellite fundraiser, which is pretty awesome.
That is really cool. That. You know, I feel like there's almost more hope for freedom in Africa than there is in the U.S. You or think other so? Places. You probably just don't live there. That's probably well, why. No. That. Well, it's just because, like, there's there's less of an ingrained infrastructure in, like, the government. There's less... I, I don't know. It feels like they have... Uh, I don't know. They may not maybe, be. Maybe, not. I, maybe their teeth aren't sunk as deeply, if you will. Like the government's not holding on as as deep into uh, the people there. Well, yeah, maybe it's my imagination, but I I just don't imagine that they have like stories of founding fathers, for example, of like you know the 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 the, the founding oppressors of our <laughs> current regime. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is the regime there in whichever country we're it's talking newer. about doesn't have it's newer, first of all, and they don't have the same legitimacy. They don't have that same tale behind them of the, the we're the founding fathers. Of the yeah, exactly. They just look more like a ruling gang. Yeah, it's less of a legacy. They're a lot like that. Yes, but, but they're also they're also ruling tenaciously, right? They're like they're holding on with a really a really tough grip, as and they're willing to kill and slaughter and do pretty horrible things to keep their power. Places right? like this, often people still want to use the power of government to get what they want, though. I mean, they still see the golden gun, whether it has legitimacy in the same way. I mean, you know, you'll find, you'll often find the poor want to use, you know, the government to get what they can get from the rich. And it's it's the same story. It's just got, a, you know, different lines to it. I don't know. I just feel like power is something of uh, sand, and when you grip it tightly, mm. the, the more it falls. So, I think there's an argument there. Yeah. I, I think it'd be interesting to you know, see which one would be an easier place to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Because you could also argue that you know maybe America has more of that mentality of people being concerned about freedom, although there's not much evidence for that. Uh, there's more evidence of it here in New Hampshire, I think, than in a lot of places in the United States. Yeah. Uh, because there is sort of this ingrained live free or die mentality up here that still does exist to some extent, although that's slowly being eliminated by the you know the people who favor the state. And that's one of the reasons why the Free State Project is such an important idea. We're here and we're sort of shoring up the reserves of the, the people who love freedom that are already here, that are natives of New Hampshire. And many of those folks appreciate the fact that we're here, even though there are some people who don't like the fact that liberty activists are in New Hampshire. And we encountered a couple of those on the streets the other night here in Keene when they, How'd that go? Uh, the swatting incident happened here, which the video got posted today to copblock.org, uh, which I was excited about. And uh, and so if you want to see that, you can go to freekeen.com. It's one of the newer stories that's up there. You can actually watch the interactions between some of the activists and uh, one or two people who were not happy with the fact that we were there holding the police accountable uh, for their actions and recording huh. video. I can't imagine what people's objections would be to really? standing there and recording. You're f far away from them. You're not even interfering. I was. I mean, I wasn't. You were pretty close at times, but yeah. you weren't interfering. So what could be their objection? They don't like it when you ask questions of the police. When you don't just take whatever they say right. at face value. Well, these people are petrified. There's a hostage situation going on. L little do we find out, it's bull crap and the pe police are being duped. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. Whether you want to talk about public property or whatever. Whatever is on your mind here, swatting, 855-450-FREE. Skype us at lrn.fm. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial on in. Toll free here. 855-450-FREE. That's uh, the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Tonight in studio, in here, Derek J. And Mark. And if you are online at all, whether it's smartphone, laptop, desktop computer, you need to look into Pro XPN. They will help protect you online from various snooping types, whether it be your internet service provider, logging the websites you visit, logging the search terms that you enter, maybe somebody sniffing your packets at uh, your local coffee shop trying to steal your passwords. ProXPN encrypts your data connection, which means that people can no longer snoop on what you're doing. ProXPN.com slash FTL is where you go to download their software, which is free, by the way, for Windows, Macintosh, iOS, or Android, plus Linux users. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, get started there, and when you're ready to upgrade, use FTL50 as your discount code to save 50% off the price of the annual account, which brings the price down to about $5 per month, and you lock in that 50% discount for the lifetime of your account. Plus, with that premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Promo code is FTL50. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go to Tom in Nashua, New Hampshire. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, J, and Mark. Yeah, it was back in the 1600s in England, by the way. Uh, King Charles I got beheaded. Yes. By, uh, Lord Cromwell, uh, see, uh, he wanted to go to war with Spain, but he had to call Parliament in their session to approve the money and to improve the taxes to, to pay for it. And 
they decided to uh, pass a new law saying, you know, like, like we're going to do our thing now. And now, see, now, now they had a chance that he didn't like this. They had this big spat, and Ch- uh, Lord Cromwell beheaded Charles I. But then you had the parliamentarians, and you had the royal loyalists, and you had other groups setting up governments and fighting with each other, and it was uh, called the Interregnum. And so I'm not familiar with that at all. Be- yeah. Interregnum is between two kings. Okay. okay? Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, the interregnum, two two different kings uh, between, and then uh, there was so much anarchy and so much chaos that they said, "Hey, uh, Charles II, yeah, you know, like, uh, could you come out of, uh, you know, uh, exile and uh, come and be king for a while?" So, you know, and he he wasn't, he knew he couldn't exactly throw his weight around the way Charles I was doing. But anyway. Uh, there was a prostitution sting in Nashua. I heard uh, about this. A couple of weekends, and a member of the Manchester School Board, uh, U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte, uh staffer, got busted for prostitution. I love it and when government it, agents get popped for prostitution. I just think that is so hypocritical. Was it for prostituting herself, or was no, it, it was for a using a prostitute? No, he got busted. And see, uh, it's perfectly okay for queers to go on and uh, get mawy to each other and get an official (laughs) government seal of approval, but it's not okay for a man to have sex with a consenting woman if he's paying her directly. He's supposed to find some uh, technique for, like, oh, he'll pay for the dinner and the movies and the drinks, but he's not paying her, literally paying her. See, when a man takes a woman out on a date, he's, what do you think, he's not paying for sex? I mean, of course, when a man takes a woman out on a date, he Tom, not you, only— you made a good point, but did you have to be so nasty about it? I mean, what's—it's—it's it's, you know, the term queer is not generally— yes. no, that's a good term. Is it we, a good term? Yeah, queer is good. We like I queer. don't think he was using it in a, in a good way, He wasn't though. trying to, but it's okay. That's We took it back, so that's why it's, it's <laughs> okay, allowed. Okay, so it was a bad term yeah. for a little while. Yeah. Okay. It's, see, see, but it's perfectly okay for them— to have a gay old yes, time. Yes, yes, it is. And, okay. And government, is t- well, they're not violating anybody's rights. Right. Okay, we have to tolerate them, but that doesn't mean we have to accept them. But now, oh, it's I accept a crime. It. Why wouldn't it's you a accept crime? it? Why, why would, uh, because it doesn't matter. Queers. But th- anyway, uh, just because uh, he's not using it very nicely. You're not being very nice, Tom. But you're making a good but, point. But the, I mean, I'll give you credit that, you know, yeah, it should be that uh, that people should be able to go to a prostitute, whether it's a man going to a female prostitute or a man going to a male prostitute. Usually it's men that go to the prostitutes, whatever the gender of the prostitute. Uh, it's very rare, I think, that uh, that women will actually go to prostitutes. Uh, but yeah, then I again, mean, uh, you, you don't see the world of prostitution point. very sort of clean, uh, welcoming places. Maybe they'd change their mind. Yeah, Tom, well, go ahead with your anyway, other point. Tom? Yeah, point here. Uh, the state of Indiana has been subjected to a great deal of criticism because they passed a law to, to say that you know it's this, it's uh, legal for uh, religious people because of their uh, religious beliefs to discriminate against queers. But and the the problem is that some queers might be discriminated against. What about people under twenty one? Nobody is forcing a business to discriminate against queers, but the same state government is forcing innocent tavern owners to discriminate against people under 21. Yeah, I agree that's with true that. as well, Tom. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Why does he have to make it a queer thing, though? Queers. I mean, it's like very homophobic. Well, that's what's in the news right now, right? No, no, like no, the, but yeah, he's but been no. homophobic before. Oh, yeah. yeah but I'm, you I'm, can make the point without bringing up gay people. You could just be like, it's unfair. That Maybe he was doing it because you were on the show. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't. You know. should have asked him when he was on the air. Oh, I well. apologize. That's okay. I, it's just weird. Like it seems like he has a hang up about it. Like maybe he just doesn't. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying like that. I'm just saying like maybe he doesn't like gay people. Well, you know, Derek J. I mean, it seems like those who protest the most about <laughs> these things, you, they are the ones who end up getting, you know, tapping somebody under the bathroom stall. You remember that that story? The politician yeah. in D.C. wasn't that some Republican guy who was like all anti-gay in his rhetoric, and then he ended up trying to tap feet with somebody in the bathroom stall. Yeah, for it happened sex. to the New Jersey governor too. Uh, and he, really? he was caught in one of the um, bathroom stalls there. And the current governor or previous? Uh, former. I believe his name was McGreevy, and he he famously resigned saying, I am right. a gay American, and tried to get the gay 
people behind him. We're like, no, we're not <laughs> not standing behind you, dude. Right Sorry. after you get busted, right? Yeah, yeah. Way I to mean, lead the crowd. It would have been different if he were like standing up as the first gay governor, and you know, and mm-hmm. t- told his wife, "Look, hey, sorry, but no, this just was just another a, guy got hot, caught trying to hump in the bathroom. Well, that's yeah. all." I suspect his wife already knew. Well, but I don't know. Knows? I guess there are probably some some gay guys who can conceal it. The funny thing is when like these senators and and uh, politicians go up to apologize for something some wrong that they've done to the public, and they're all the TV cameras are in front of them, and they're yep. at some podium, and their wife is like crying next to them. <laughs> that's I, I get a little bit of pleasure out of that. Sorry. <laughs> Toll free number tonight, 855-450 free. Uh, so we were talking about this Edward Snowden bust that is a hundred pound sculpture. And there's a little bit more of information here that I thought was worth sharing about this artistic creation. Uh, the New York artist who created it said that there's a media landscape that has painted Snowden as a criminal. You need something theatrical and large to counterbalance the Fox newsiness of the texture of the conversation out there, they said. They commissioned a sympathetic West Coast artist who took six months to create this bust, which cost thousands of dollars and had to be shipped across the country. I can tell you, I'm shipping uh, right now a a Bitcoin vending machine internationally from Canada down to New Hampshire. And that's like, that's $350 to ship from Vancouver. I imagine this bust, and this is, the bust is heavier than that machine, I think. Oh no, it's about the same, same weight. But anyway, that's a lot of money to ship that thing and probably cost a lot more. In fact, it said here it was $30,000, the amount of work that went into this thing is what it was worth. Uh, There's more coming up here in moments. 855, 450 free, and now it's in the possession, purportedly, of the state of New York. It's Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. 
Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free and take control of the airwaves. You're, you can bring up anything. You don't have to talk about uh, getting busted for prostitution, legalizing prostitution, which is what we were just talking about a few moments ago, the politicians resigning and sort of the ridiculous scenes uh, that tend to populate that. Also, we were talking about Edward Snowden and the bust, the 100-pound sculpture that had been placed in a park in New York City and that was subsequently removed within hours of it being discovered this morning. All of that and more, whatever you want to discuss here, 855-450-FREE. Also, Free Talk Live accepts Bitcoin, but you've got to have Bitcoin to give some Bitcoin away, and you can get Bitcoin as well as Litecoin, Dogecoin, and I believe some other coins over at ExpressCoin.com. We still have the Bitcoin sale going on. You can get half price off of uh ad rates here at free talk live that would be a smart move if you're paying with bitcoin and i'll take any other cryptocurrency too for that actually oh really i didn't realize that i didn't really think about it because yeah. uh, bitcoin's what comes to mind when i think about those things but if you're some kind of dogecoin fanatic and you want to pay in dogecoin yeah, for your you ads that. i'll give you a discount sure all right that's cool uh so yeah expresscoin.com don't expect me to keep them in dogecoin though right that's where you go expresscoin.com if you want to get some uh some wonderful cryptocurrency like bitcoin use coupon code ftl and you'll get up to 40 dollars worth of your cryptocurrency of choice for no transfer fee. Normally when you buy a Bitcoin, there's a transfer fee. You're changing one form of currency into another, and somebody's performing that service. They want to usually charge you for that. At ExpressCoin, their transfer fee is normally very, very low. It's the best I've seen in the industry. And you can waive that fee entirely by just getting less than $40 worth with coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you out. ExpressCoin.com, code FTL. Let's go to Lonnie, listening in Los Angeles or Louisiana. I'm not sure. Lonnie, is it Louisiana? Yeah, it's Louisiana. Sorry about that. Go ahead, sir. You're on the air. All right, yeah, y'all uh, were talking about the blackmail story last night. Mm. Uh, you mean the revenge porn story where the guy who uh, was running a revenge porn website allowing people to post photos of, say, an ex or something like that, uh, nude pictures, uh, sexy pictures, that kind of thing, and then post details about the person in the picture, you know, their alleged address or phone number, email address, things like that, uh, was resulting in some difficult situations for some of the people who were photographed and, and put up on that site. Uh, and a lot of people were upset at the viewpoint that I was expressing on the air last night. Uh, Mark, you were saying that the Facebook post was just blowing up. It blew up, yeah. With uh, with comments and almost all of them negative. But Lonnie, what was your uh, what did you want to share? Yeah, I wanted to call and see uh, this attempt to uh, kind of clear up the legal theory around that. Real quick uh, question before you go on: Are you on like a headset? I'm just curious. Yes, I am. Okay. Is it too dangerous for you to not be on the headset? Uh, probably not. Hold on one second. Yeah, if you don't mind. A lot of, I mean, I understand that, like, safety and all, but, hey, this is audio right. quality, and audio quality is very important. Uh, Lonnie? Yeah, I asked for a screener, but it's all right. It's not really that much better. Anyway, go ahead with your thoughts. Oh, sorry. Um, so uh, there's a couple different elements. Uh, there's a lot of confusion around uh, kind of property. Um, uh, so... Uh, the property of the uh, individual, some of them were being hacked and some of them uh, were just not, like honestly procuring the, the property that was being used to blackmail. Uh, that's 
whole other thing that I think is separate from uh, the reputation. Like, that's what's really in question, and that's what everybody has the trouble with. Uh, and the reputation of that individual does not belong to them. That's correct. Right? So it belongs to the person, right, that – yeah, so uh, – so you would follow me there? Does that make Yeah, it makes like perfectly dark, good sense. I mean, my opinion about Barack Obama is different than the guy who lives next door's opinion on Barack Obama, and both of those opinions are ours. So reputation is just really sort of talking about people's opinions in aggregate. Right. And so it could go positive or negative. It, it doesn't, you know, as far as the female goes and she's being blackmailed and whatever the material is that's being used against her. Um, well, I'd just like to clarify something. I know you've got. To, I know you want to go on, and I want to hear what you have to say. But I, I don't know if blackmail is the right term for what was going on on that site. I don't think it is because usually the kind of classic definition of blackmailing is where you have some sort of information about someone, and you tell that person, "Hey, you either pay me, or I go public with this information, or I reveal this information to your boss, or your girlfriend, or boyfriend, or whatever, whoever that, whatever would cause damage purportedly to that individual in some way, purport, uh, supposedly to their reputation. You, uh, you withhold that information from release on the expectation that the victim will pay up, and then if they don't, then purportedly release that information that's blackmailing this guy wasn't doing that he just ran a website where users would come upload pictures and put text information in with those pictures he would then offer the service of removing the pictures and text from the website for a payment of 250 to 350 dollars from mm -hmm. the person who was photographed now some would claim that's extortion but at the same time i think you could also argue it's just performing a service mm -hmm. on a website so i don't think blackmail is appropriate even if you were going to say he was doing extortion you still couldn't call it blackmailing well, i think that's the difference distinction uh, really but uh the main thing i get across is uh kind of the causality like of the property how is the property appropriated and the property uh is a product of the person's action right the property is a product of what Who action of the person that the person that's being extorted the product of their action yeah. yep, right? if it right. wasn't for them then that wouldn't exist uh so Whenever you go and you you claim uh, damages, you have to decide you know who is causal of of the damages. She, the person that has created the material that's being used to extort somebody, she they have created the ma the material, right? Yeah, but in it's some not, cases, it, it's not the property itself. It's a copy of the property, and you know, so any person in possession of that has a legitimate copy, right? Yeah, but also, the, these copies could have. This property could have been obtained through sort of secret videos. I, I knew a guy when um, at one point who was who would just take videos of all his sexual encounters without them knowing. Without them knowing, um, and wow. th th these things are all over the internet. You can get an alarm clock that has a camera on yep. it and just mm -hmm. point it in the right direction and um, do the deed right. And so he just, as far as I know, kept these for his own consumption. Mm -hmm. But apparently he will share that information with people, and perhaps if you're, uh, you know, you ask enough, he'll give you the a copy. I don't know. I suspect there's a price at which he would All give right. you the copy as well. Lonnie? So this is what I feel that keeps getting mixed up. It, it's mixing up the different uh, property. Uh, the property. The property in question is the reputation. It's not the... You know, the other is a whole other separate issue as far as uh, making copies of it and all that. Hmm. Uh, but the person that, that has created, if you want to call the reputation property, uh, the, rep the reputation is the property of the person holding the reputation, right? You mean the but opinion. The person, You're talking about the, the when you say the reputation, right. you mean the opinions of people about that person, <laughs> right, which is exactly. their property. Right. It's, it's right. The holder's property. But who who is causal of that reputation? You know. see, the, the person that the person that is causal of the the uh, damages is the person that was responsible for the actions in the first place. You're so losing me. Is this yeah. one of those situations where we're saying that women are responsible because they took the the pictures in the first place? Right. No, not if they're, they're the ones that's causal. Well, that's like saying that I'm causal because I have money in my pocket for somebody wanting to steal it. That's ridiculous. Well, right. If somebody steals those photos, then they are responsible for you know what happens with the photos that uh, that they've stolen. Now, of course, proving. But what if they get it honestly? That's 
That's what I'm well, saying. Right. Yeah. I suspect that most of them were got, were gleaned honestly on that right. website. I, I think that, and so this is one of the things we talked about last night is, is sort of, is there an implicit contract, right? Like Ian doesn't believe in implicit contracts, but I think that when if I were to hand over a naked picture to a girlfriend, that what my thought process is, is that you're not, you're not going to use this against no, that's me that's totally going to get shared. Right, right. You well, can't just keep your mouth shut on things like that. If it's important, if you, you better speak up. It, what if you did? What if you said that and there's no there's no copy of it, right? Like that that gets said a lot. Yeah, well, I had that's a, a problem too. I, I had a co- I had a picture like that given to me, and it was pretty clear that I'm not supposed to use it, uh, you know, in the wrong way. Lonnie, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate the discussion. Toll free numbers eight fifty five four fifty free. Your thoughts uh, on the revenge porn thing, Derek J. You weren't here for the conversation, so I'm interested yeah. to hear how you feel about it. Coming up here in moments, uh, lots of people upset about this story. It's Free Talk Live eight fifty five four fifty free. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, it's MZ from KSCO in Santa Cruz, and I'm too excited to sleep. Have you ever been too excited to sleep? In my case, I can't sleep because I'm engaged in my own fun, wonderful, rewarding business in which I do well and do good, lots of good at the same time. The wheels in my head are always turning, coming up with creative ideas to grow this business and to share it with others, train them for free, and get them to my level of success and excitement. This business has no employees, no rent, and no advertising cost. It's a people business that uses phones, video, email, and online technology to spread a very valuable and timely message about health, wealth, and above all, independence. You can get started in this business with as little as $10, but if you can afford an additional one-time charge of $500, you can jumpstart your success. But it doesn't cost anything to watch a 17-minute video all about this amazing business that you too can join and start doing well and do a lot of good at the same time. Go online to this website, tooexcitedtosleep.net. That's tooexcitedtosleep.net. tooexcitedtosleep.net. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now, mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com
You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you in studio tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Whether we are talking about public property, the Edward Snowden bus that was stolen by government workers uh, today in New York City, whatever is on your mind goes here. Also, the, uh, the story from last night that really blew up on our Facebook page with a lot of angry people. Uh, just basically th- trying to say that we're bad people because, and I, and I want to put words in your mouth, Mark, but you did seem to be sort of on the side that this was a free speech issue first and foremost. And well, uh, this uh, guy who, for our listeners that don't know what we're talking about, the uh, and I forget his name, I apologize, I don't have the story in front of me at the moment, but we just got a call about it. It was the guy who got, bu- got sentenced to 18 years in prison for running a website that allowed simply allowed people to post pictures of like their ex-boyfriend or girlfriend uh usually naked on the site and post personal information about that person no doubt what he was doing was a despicable kind of thing but when you support free speech you have to support the right to use your free speech for despicable purposes I think that that's um you know mostly what I was seeing on the Facebook page were people that were uh, shocked by the way it was phrased, right? Like they're saying, you, you use the term frightening Yeah, uh, I think this is a frightening infringement on free speech. You're talking about the headline that I wrote for this article. Yeah. I think this the fact this man's going to prison for 18 years for running a website is a hugely frightening infringement upon free speech. Kevin Bollard is his name. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I don't think people are prepared for it, right? Like there wasn't the conversation. I think the first thing you have to say when you're having a free speech conversation is, listen, when you're talking about free speech, what we need to remember is is that popular speech doesn't need pr- your protection, doesn't need the government's protection. What needs protection is unpopular speech. And then people are like, yeah, yeah, that makes perfectly good sense. And then when you start talking from that standpoint, then you can have a conversation that tends to go somewhere. Because well, otherwise, we mentioned that on the air, but not everybody right. on Facebook is listening to the The vast show. majority are not, and it's right. abundantly clear. As a matter of fact, they're offended when you tell them, hey, you know, you could have a much more fruitful conversation uh, by being on the air. When you get on uh, Free Talk Live's Facebook page, you post something, maybe a few hundred people will see it or whatever, because not everybody's going to go through and read the comments. Or what, nope. Even though 25,000 people saw the post, they didn't all go through the Probably comments. Probably 10% of them looked at the comments. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So you're still talking about you know 2,500 people. Big, fat, hairy deal when you're talking about Free Talk Live, a nationally syndicated radio talk show, yeah. where you can actually have a conversation instead of just yelling epithets at people. Epithets? Epithets. People epithets. gave these photos to this man, correct? They uploaded them to his website, yes. Okay. So no harm, no foul. He didn't ask for these photos. I well, think he, the right? worst thing about it is, is he was asking for money to remove them. Right? Why is that bad? Right. It, it I mean, it takes time. time. Yeah. Oh, well. Go ahead. Yeah, yes, that's the ex- same thing I was going to say. I mean, uh, think about all the people who, who uh, bother, like, webmasters. Like, oh, take this down. I don't like this one yep. thing. Or I, I commented here, and I, I'd like that removed. Um, who has time for that? And if you're going to be inundated with requests, as I'm sure this guy was, was. I'd like to be compensated. hundred a day. Uh, yeah, so, okay. So you're just going to do this volunteer work for people, like out of the goodness of your heart, like, oh, let me just remove all your photos all day, every day, and never get paid a dime for it. Forget that, But, man. Derek, they were ruining their lives. These, who was? These women were having their lives ruined, they well, said. Well, they there shouldn't were people be who... screwing guys who are going to do this to them. <laughs> well, I, I think that that's, you know, that that only looks like victim blaming to most folks, right? Well, I I'm say... sorry, but that's what I say. It's like, if you don't know the people that you're sleeping with, maybe you should start. Well, I think that pictures are probably the place that uh, that you, you you know this that, that you should start looking at is not taking pictures and giving them to people. That's just you know just don't do it. Well, There's that's just what no I recommended benefit. was yeah, just don't give pictures but, to people of your nakedness. Oh come on, no, I encourage that. I think we should normalize it and be okay with it. Well, and then I this, would, this I, website I, I, I wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, I agree with that. I meant to say that under the context of if you're worried about your picture getting out there. Oh yeah, uh, then don't the leave your house, okay? Yeah, because you're gonna have your picture taken sometime. And if people find you attractive, then it might end up on one of these websites. So you better get a burqa, better cover up, 
you know, get tinted windows, get a bubble boy net for yourself so you never have to interact with other people. I mean, for Christ's sake, people's pictures are going to end up on the internet. No, I it's agree 2015. With, let's get over it. I, I agree with you that, uh, you know, there's so many, and there's so much amateur porn out there. I mean, the, there's just... There's countless pictures of naked people on the internet. The difference, though, and uh, I'm on your side, by the way, Derek James yeah. is sort of arguing here for the point of uh, making an argument. The difference is that this isn't just the average collection of nudes, right? This is an, a bunch of nudes with address, phone number, email address, like personally identifying contact information. Then the people who post those things right. might want to be think. held responsible. That, it's not the man who has the website. Right. Th and I, this is the point that I think that we came, that was the strongest of what we made last night, is this is just lazy, lazy police work and everybody cheering on, whoa, the wood, how excellent. They got him. Yeah. Right. Wait, <laughs> this is crap, okay? Look, the, some guy from an, uh, from Antigua can uh, put up a website hosted in Suriname tomorrow and then the San Diego police officers aren't going to be able to do anything about it. This guy's true uh, crime was being in the United States. You know, so if, uh, you know, there's nothing, the revenge porn sites are really, if there's a crime involved, it's the crime of the poster, not the hoster. Yeah, the real solution would be if the police uh, developed a, a team of coders and found a solution for tracking down the people who are posting these things. Like if they invented some technology that would actually uh, be useful in future websites that try and replicate this, All right. then they might be helping people. So further point, though, uh, since we're you know kind of blaming the people for posting this, yeah. but if they garnered this information... Legally, you know, if they knew her phone number legally, if they knew her email address legally, if they knew her home address, yeah, should it also be illegal to dock somebody and post that information? I don't think it I should. Know. I don't think it should. I don't think the people who posted the information have committed a crime either. I think it's distasteful no, what they've no, done. No, no, no. They haven't committed a crime, but I'd like to know who they are because I want like. I think it is a despicable act mm -hmm. to do. It's not a. It's not a crime. It's just distasteful. And right. so I want to know who these people are because so if out they, them. yeah, if they are doxing others, well, I think they are fair game to be doxed. Right. Like well, uh, what happened with Damon, the guy who came here to Keene, who had uh, had doxed a bunch of Freedom uh, Freedom Main Radio listeners, and then he himself ended up with a, a website doxing him at DamonDoxDox.com. I don't think that it's a crime, but I do think that it could be a violation of a contract. For instance, if you you know you give somebody a picture and say, "Hey, this isn't for public consumption," and they go ahead and they make it for public consumption, they violated a contract, whether you know whether we like it or not. Yeah, but there's so, hard to it's, you can't prove a verbal contract typically. You can't, but uh, you could assume that somebody said something you know, like that. The assume. chances are good that if I hand you a naked picture of myself, Ian, that I'm not giving it to you for public consumption because I would post it. There's reasonable doubt there. It, yeah, it, it, it could be reasonable doubt, but at that point, hey, it's I didn't agree to that. She gave me her pictures. I thought she was really pretty, so I gave them to all my friends and posted it on this one website. Yeah, I, uh, I think that you know people are just going to assume that that's a lie. And they ought to, because it's a stupid lie. So I, I think that at that point you're talking about a tort that has been created. But how do you know she's not an exhibitionist? You know that because she, she would be post seen. it herself. She would have posted if she's an exhibitionist. She mm -hmm. hasn't handed one picture to one guy, hoping that he will put her crap on the internet. She's been an exhibitionist her whole life, and you will see a pattern of exhibiting herself. And mm -hmm. then she won't be. You won't be able to go after this this uh, one dude. What he could have done is offered another service where he traced the IP address of the person who posted the images. Offer a service for the women to yeah. find out who the so person was. So it's $100 wants. For, to take down the information, and it's another $100 if you want yeah. the IP address. That would have been a good idea. Um, I think that what people now. find despicable is that he opened a revenge porn website, from what I can tell. Like, that's mm -hmm. what was the purpose of this site. So if somebody went on... It's called YouGotPosted.com. Yeah. If somebody went on the Free Talk Live's BBS at bbs.freetalklive.com, it's just a message for him, and they decided, for whatever reason, a whole bunch of people decided to turn it into a revenge porn website when that wasn't its purpose, uh. then I can see why people would, uh, you know, like Ian would say, like, at some point or another, I, I can't take all these pictures down. You're going to have to pay me to do it. Right. Like, that makes some sense. Mm -hmm. So e at that point, either you just shut down the website, which would probably be the easiest thing to do in that circumstance, or you uh, say that you know it's going to cost you some money to pull down these these pictures. At which point, people are going to hate you because their pictures are online and you're extorting them, is the terminology. But I'd say that that is legitimately 
work that's being created for you. However, this dude sort of made a website so that he could then have the work of taking down people's pictures and, and getting money from them. Yeah, this is why I can see people saying that, well, I don't care, you know, that um, it's unjust exactly what happened to him or I don't want to work out the details. This guy's a bad dude and he ended up in jail and so I'm happy. You that's know, what I people just are case saying. closed. They- he he, he did care. something despicable, and I don't need to sort it out. Let's let the judge sort it out or something, I guess is what yeah, they're some saying. Some guy said 18 years was plenty. It was an appropriate amount of time for this guy. Yeah, well, yeah I, I think, just think 18 years is crazy. I think that's lazy for people to accept that as justice because, like, like Mark pointed out, another website could start up tomorrow, and the police haven't done anything to prevent that. Right, because all the pictures are still out there, whoever also, had them originally. Yeah, all the victims are still out there, too, so that hasn't corrected the problem for them either. It's only made the police look like they've done something. You know, it's, it allows people to pat them on the back and uh, say, hey, thanks, guys, you helped us. Well, you didn't do anything. You just put a guy in prison for 18 years, and now all the victims have to pay to keep him there. 855 four. 50 free more coming up here on free talk live are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa stop searching with easy dns you found a keeper easy dns does it all domain names web hosting and managed wordpress hosting easy dns stands up for your internet freedom and with servers in canada they do not cooperate with the nsa go to easydns.com you'll love their services or get a full refund they guarantee it and they accept bitcoin that's easydns.com in a trial by jury the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused it is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life liberty or property as a juror you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict legislative executive judicial the fourth branch of government is we the people find out more from the fully informed jury association at fija.org are you tired of governments murdering people around the world stop using their money there is an alternative bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government by using their money you're helping the state stop doing it you have an incredible alternative available now learn it use it spread it get started with bitcoin at weusecoins.com that's weusecoins.com Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, April 6th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,219 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $258. Antiwar.com reports, talking to the major American networks yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continued railing against the Iran nuclear framework deal and reiterated his determination to try to kill it. Netanyahu has repeatedly talked up sabotaging the nuclear negotiation on Israeli media, but this was the first time he was so overt about leading the anti-diplomacy push on U.S. media. He tried to present the push against the current deal as a push for a better deal, though that hypothetical deal that Netanyahu might accept is so far-fetched, U.S. officials say it wasn't even worth bringing up at the talks to the Western nations, let alone Iran. As it stands, however, Israel appears to be inconsolably outraged about the deal and is gearing up its powerful lobby to another run at the U.S. Congress with an eye towards getting legislation passed that would effectively sabotage the ongoing talks towards a final deal. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports Tesla Motors announced it broke a company record for the first quarter of 2015 by delivering 10,030 vehicles soon after West Virginia banned sales of its vehicles. The record was broken through a 55% sales increase for the same period from the previous year. Tesla also announced it will deliver sales information three days after the end of each quarter instead of waiting 40 days when the company is required to file them to the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission. The company expects to sell 50 55,000 cars in 2015, up from the 31,000 vehicles they delivered the previous year. Tesla has had trouble turning a profit in previous years, losing $294 million last year, $74 million in 2013, and $396 million in 2012. Tesla's first quarter financial report should be filed in May. Additionally, direct sales of Tesla vehicles were banned in West Virginia on Friday by Governor Earl Ray Tomlin after he signed a bill into law that stated an automaker may not act in the capacity of a new motor vehicle dealer. Tesla is banned from selling its vehicles directly in at least four other states. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Rolling Stone magazine failed to follow basic journalistic safeguards in publishing a since-retracted story about the alleged gang rape at a University of Virginia frat house. In its lengthy critique of the article conducted at the request of the magazine, the Columbia Journal Review said Rolling Stone's repudiation of the main narrative in A Rape on Campus is a story of journalistic failure that was avoidable. The failure encompassed reporting, editing, editorial supervision, and fact-checking. Led by the dean of the Columbia Journalism School, the review examined the editorial process behind the explosive story, which failed to hold up under a barrage of questions raised by other media after its publication in November. The article, written by Sabrina Rubin Erdely, gave a detailed account of a 2012 gang rape that a woman identified as Jackie said had endured at a frat house as a first-year student and accused the university of tolerating a culture that ignored sexual violence against women. In December, Rolling Stone apologized for discrimination discrepancies in the account and admitted that it never sought comment from seven men accused for the alleged rape. The Columbia Journalism Review had previously cited the article at the top of its list of the worst journalism of 2014, faulting Erdely for failing to check Jackie's account against other sources, including her alleged attackers and three friends who were depicted as unsympathetic towards her. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Following reports that local full-blown alcoholic Ken Matheson has such great friends that let him drink himself to death right before their eyes, the 32-year-old man spoke to reporters during a typical evening of binging with his closest friends. Man, these guys are like brothers to me. I don't know what I'd do without them. The chemically dependent man who can reportedly always count on his friends to look the other way, facilitate belligerent behavior, and encourage his self-destructive impulses, informed reporters that the members of his tight-knit circle are, quote, the best buddies a guy could ask for. Can you just, can you just, can you just shut the f*** up? Seriously. Just, just shut the f*** up. I lost them. I lost them. F*** back then. Ugh. Keep going. What the f*** are you looking at? I love you, man. I love you. Check this week's Onion Review for further developments. (laughs) I love you. Oh, God, I love everybody. This is the Onion News Network.
Welcome back to more Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on the site. Tonight in studio, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget, you can check out Derek's website at Derek... Oops. I the got, Derek J. Dot com. I still have the old one in mind. The Derek J. Dot com is the new site, but the old site still works, right? Actually, it doesn't. It got <gasps> crazy expensive, so they fooled me on it. It was a dot me. Oh, no. And don't... You know, for the listeners out there, don't get fooled by this. A lot of websites will like... Make it really cheap for you to have a weird domain extension for the first year, for the first year or something, or what two they, years what or whatever. Get, what was. was it at first, and then what did they it jack like it eight, up to? Eight dollars to forty dollars, mm. which forty dollars is not crazy. I could have dumped the money on it and been like, but then it was going to be forty dollars every year. And it's oh, like, geez. is it really worth it? I don't think so. So I just changed the domain. So okay, so we can't give out the old one. It's anymore. a dot com, the Derek J dot com, the Derek J dot com. Great blog site, lots of content. I yeah, mean, just I do a lot of, of my own stuff on video recording around Keene, New Hampshire. Like uh, there was, you know, the SWAT uh, videos that you mentioned will be mm-hmm. going up there, and Freedom Fiends I'll be hosting later. You'll see the podcast there. At Audio, the video, blogs, yes, all things Derek J. Yeah, all the things Der- freedom. You know, I I just want to increase freedom. In our, Me too. In your life and mine. TheDerekJ.com. Uh, I do have an expensive domain. LRN.FM is $70 a year. Yeah, .FMs are a lot. I yeah. remember looking that up uh, for Peace News back in the day. Well, yeah. anyway, yes, I have a story about a, a man. Oh, yes, the Eric Garner situation. Let's get into that, shall we? Can we? Because I think we could, we could always keep talking about public property right. and things like that. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, let's do it. This is another one that I had in prep tonight as well. So, we, so were, we had synergy on this one as well. Well, headline, man imprisoned after filming Eric Gardner's death, refusing to eat rat poison found in jail food. And wasn't he in there? I know this is what the story This isn't what the story is necessarily about, but wasn't he in there on some kind of trumped up nonsense charge too? I don't remember what it was, but I remember we did read about this guy. That the guy who filmed Eric Garner being choked to death in New York City over the summer was he himself arrested and charged with something. I just yeah, I'll have to look it up and see what it was. Possession of a firearm. Oh, this really? article gets into okay, it. Okay, good. So, 22-year-old Ramsey Orta, the young man who filmed the NYPD killing Eric Garner, was arrested shortly after on trumped-up charges. He's since been locked up at the notorious Rikers Prison in New York. And this story comes to us from thefreethoughtproject.com, where John Vibes writes today. Immediately following the killing of Eric Gardner, Orta was stalked and targeted by police. They allegedly scrutinized Orta's daily life until they were able to find something to charge him with. Eventually, he was confronted by police who illegally searched him Mm. and arrested him for the nonviolent crime of carrying an unregistered firearm. In New York City. That's correct. Orta had expressed concern for his safety after his arrest because he was sure that the police were retaliating against him for exposing what they had done to Eric Gardner. While in prison, Orta has taken seemingly drastic measures to ensure that he is not killed by the gang he witnessed murder Eric Gardner. Orta has been refusing to eat as he fears that guards may poison him because he is a high-profile opponent of police brutality. Sadly, Orta's fears were well-founded. While he's been behind bars at Rikers, dozens of other inmates have reported traces of rat poison in their food, a claim that was actually recently admitted by prison officials. Now, this is shocking. I mean, how would the inmate have known there was a trace of rat poison in their food? I mean, how do you how do you determine that it's as bizarre. an inmate? I mean, I'm not da- I'm not doubting them. it was true, but you can see them. See the actual little nibbles of poison or something? Yeah, they're like green and black <laughs> pellets. Okay. Uh, so here it is. So uh, it was reported by the New York Post last month that wow. 19 different inmates were denied medical testing after bluish green pellets were found in their food. Wow. That's creepy, man. The prison admitted that these pellets were rat poison, but failed oh to give inmates God. the medical attention and failed to offer any kind of explanation as to why the prison's food was tainted with rat poison. Now, Ian, you and I have both worked in, in the jail, jail kitchen. kitchen. Yeah, we would know. It would be no accident 
that mm, nope. something would go out with rat poison in it. There's not like, oh, There's something no fell there, from the yeah. ceiling nope. and, they, you know, there were some rats. Uh, like, oh, it's so dirty. This could just happen by accident. There's a, there's, I didn't see any poison around in that kitchen. No. There's a line. Like, there's a line, you know, these... Uh, Meals have to be prepared quickly, and right. so it's done sort of in a um, assembly line yeah. style. Yeah. And so every person has domain over what they're adding. Who's in charge of adding the rat poison? <laughs> I'd like to know. <laughs> well, I don't. I presume that this kitchen in this jail is also inmate run. Um, so it makes me wonder. You know, is is the rat poison being added after the fact? Or are the inmates themselves involved in this? I would, I suspect if it's being added, it's probably being added after the fact, unless uh, the inmates are being paid or being given some sort of a, uh, you know, uh, a spiff to uh, incentivize them to poison some of their the fellow inmates. Well, um, okay, so having and spit- why not crush the rat poison up? I mean, I don't know anything question. about anything, but you'd think that they would crush up the rat poison. That, Maybe to uh, send a message. Uh, hmm. It could be very well be that, um, it, but also let's not forget that uh, you know food gets poisoned by inmates all the time. Does it? I spent some time in prison, and I can tell you that uh, inmates uh, would do something that they called booming uh, was the terminology um, where we were that they would spit or pee or ejaculate into uh, the food. Now this isn't high level poisoning, but it is low level poisoning, right? I call it adulteration. Okay, fine, Ad- adulteration. Um, you know, any of those it's things gross. is fine. But you're not going to die from it. Like so, that. I mean, if you're in Rikers Island, uh, you know, the most notorious county jail in the United States, I suppose— Is this more notorious than Joe Arpaio's jail? It's It's got a longer history. I've definitely heard bad things about Rikers, but yeah. it's not recently. It's got a longer history, so I'm just going to go for that. Yeah. Fine. Among the two yeah. most notorious uh, <laughs> county jails in, uh, in the There's in probably US. all kinds of bad stuff that goes on here. You don't hear usually about the bad stuff that happens in jails because it's so regular. It's such a common occurrence. And the uh, the guys that are in the jails, you know, they don't hardly know anybody on the outside. And the people they know on the outside are they're usually their wives or uh, girlfriends and, you know, family members. And they don't have the media connections that it takes to actually get the word out about all the terrible abuses that happen in so many different jails. The one in Manchester is is also renowned as uh, as a terrible jail. It's a terrible jail. There's no doubt about it. Murders. People. We we've known people in there who've said that people were murdered on a monthly basis by the jail guards in the Manchester jail. It's a frightening. It's a frightening claim. Um, yeah. Thank goodness. Uh, you know, I've never been a place like that. But um, I think that you know what we're what we're dealing with here could very well be just some inmate who found some rat poison who's mm. a jerk, a big old jerk. But there were 19 inmates who had their well. He put it in the food, poison. right? Like so, it could have put it All in the beans or whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, right. I think that's a plausible. It's as plausible of an explanation as anything else. I don't know. Well, Orta, this man in question, has been refusing to eat. Can't blame him. So he hasn't ingested any of the food laced with rat poison, and he's not one of the 19 inmates in question. However, his health is deteriorating, and he's he's, skinny, right? He's not a big guy, is he? No, he was already small when he came in. That's not. And now he's becoming uh, malnourished (laughs) due to the lack of food. Uh, I wonder if they'll start an injection thing with him. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it probably won't be an injection. They'll probably shove tubes up his nose, which is horrifying. Yeah, because, you know, let's remember this whole thing, according to this article, started under false pretense that they didn't have any, the police didn't have a legitimate cause they to had search to trump him. It up. Yeah. yeah, and so they discovered this gun and uh, they didn't have legitimate authority to search him in the first place. So speaking in an exclusive interview with the Free Thought Project, Danette Chavez, organizer and founder of National Action Against Police Brutality, pointed out... Uh, the following. It's imperative that each and every one of us watch this case closely for what is being done to Ramsey Orta is being done across the United States mm. to those who would resist the oppressive forces of police. Let's talk about it more here in a moment here uh, with uh, more from the free the free thought project dot com. That's correct. It's a great website. They've always got really interesting coverage. And of course, the editorial viewpoint there is very, very principled uh, libertarian, at least from what I can tell it, John Vibes and the crew over there do a great job. 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. You can share your thoughts. Who's behind this poisoning? What do you think? It's Free Talk Live. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, "Let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas." There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Shortly after Seattle area consulting firm Brink and Tiller received a resume from Corey Wilhelm, a college graduate with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Communications, Human Resources Director Robert Bradshaw immediately fast-tracked Wilhelm's application and spoke with The Onion about this exceptional candidate. Well, the second I saw Corey's resume, I knew I had to send it straight up to our CEO. I mean, we're talking about an applicant who not only got into the University of Washington School of Communication, but also managed to graduate in four years with a Bachelor of Arts. This kid's only 22, but according to his resume, he already has experience in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. We're really going to have to move fast to get this guy. Bradshaw went on to say that company heads could barely believe the candidate had two years of experience working at his college newspaper and had even taken a full four years of high school Spanish. Since receiving the application, Bradshaw claims the company has made numerous attempts to reach Wilhelm. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You may dial toll free here at 855 450 free. 855 450 3733. And you can also join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Joining you in studio tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J.'s website, thederekj.com. Our site, freetalklive.com. We accept Bitcoin, and Derek J., so do you. Yeah. In fact, uh, you only accept uh, cryptocurrencies. No Federal Reserve notes allowed. That's right. 
We'll still take the Sorry Federal to be exclusive. We'll still that. take the Federal Reserve notes. You can go to amp.freetalklive.com to amp up with Federal Reserve notes, but hopefully we'll be adding Bitcoin to our amp program in the near future. I can't say when, but oh, really? sometime this year. I feel safe. <laughs> I feel safe saying that cuz you know, these web development things, they take a lot of time. Uh, whenever you put a date an end date or a, a target date on a web development project, it always goes over the target date. So hopefully I'll be within that target date. Uh, but in the meantime, if you've got some Bitcoin burning a hole in your wallet, you just want to donate it, you can go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com. And more importantly, we can now accept dozens of cryptocurrencies. Dozens of them. Now, so it used to be that you could go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com and we had our Bitcoin address there and we had a Litecoin address there. Well, now you can do Litecoin, you can do Namecoin, you can do PP coin, whatever that one stands for, Shadow Cash, you can do uh, what are some of the other ones? NXT, Dashcoin. Dashcoin, Doge. So, I mean, there's literally two dozen of these altcoins. I don't know what they all are, but there's two dozen of them. You go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com scroll down just a little bit right underneath the bitcoin portion there's a section called altcoin tip jar and shapeshift.io which is eric Voorhees's new project he's a free talk live uh, listener from a long time ago and a free state project participant he launched this what i consider to be really useful website shapeshift.io that allows anybody with any of these two dozen of the most popular altcoins out there so you got a bunch of doge you don't know what the heck you can do with well, send them to us. You can do it easily now over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. And the cool thing about Shapeshift is it automatically translates those Doge into Bitcoin. So I don't have to spend time, you know, getting a Doge wallet and then, you know, going and trying to get us uh, an account on some exchange website and then having to put in the order to sell my Doge. No, now it's just done instantly as soon as you or as close to instant as you can get with changing cryptocurrencies. You just go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com, use the pay with altcoins button and then just send us whatever altcoin you want. There's two dozen of them there. Very cool. And you can add this to your website, too, by the way. It's very easy to do. I put it on Freekeen, I put it on LRN.FM, and I put it on uh, Bitcoin.FreeTalkLive.com. Yeah, I just went and checked it out. It looks really Isn't easy to use. Sharp? There's only one button that you really have to use, uh, just a select down menu of pay with, and then yep. it's got the address to send to. Uh, a couple other input are optional, but that's all it's it takes. super easy. They've done an amazing job on it. So, uh, lots to talk about here tonight. Derek J. continuing with the story from thefreethoughtproject.com about the gentleman who is currently in prison on gun charges in New York City. He had a firearm without a permission slip, which mm -hmm. I imagine is a pretty serious offense in New York City. Um, of course, the, it's completely legal here in New Hampshire. Well, yes, that's correct. Uh, if you've got it concealed, it may not be completely legal, and he didn't still. It, it would be a misdemeanor. It wouldn't send him to. Is it a Rikers. misdemeanor here? Yeah. Then, is it a class A misdemeanor? Is it jailable? I don't even know if it's an arrestable offense. Yeah, I don't it know seems either. So I feel like petty. it might be a violation. Yeah, it's Hampshire. like a forty dollars fine or something. Slap on the wrist. I don't I'll know. have to look into that. Yeah. But, um, but tell me more, because he says he's worried about getting poisoned. This guy doesn't have a lot of meat on his bones. He, I remember seeing him in a, in a photograph, and he, he didn't look like a huge guy. Like, Eric Garner was a meaty guy. Like, he was a big man. He could have lost a little weight. Yeah, this guy uh, is now going on a hunger, or he's been on a hunger strike in jail, and it's it's being de it's become detrimental to his health. But they're, he's worried about being poisoned, and for good reason. They have found rat poison in these people's food in his wing of the prison. Right. You're only paranoid if you're wrong, you know? This guy actually did find rat poison. Yeah, so tell me more about this. Well, according to the article at thefreethoughtproject.com, Orta's situation is dire. There's only so long that a person can go without adequate nutrition— and it's now been proven that the food in prison cannot be trusted. Not for your average inmate, and especially not for controversial ones. His bail has been set at $16,250, <sighs> and his family cannot afford to pay it. Oh, man. I'm surprised somebody hasn't stepped forward on I'm that. I'm amazed that someone hasn't stepped forward on that. That's shocking. Well, maybe they needed indie media to report this fact. Maybe yeah, people maybe weren't aware. Now. That's certainly true. Well, uh, this is a life and death situation, so his family has started a fundraiser to help with the legal fees. Okay. Unfortunately, however, the campaign has only raised a fraction of its goal, so please consider donating. According to this article, it says uh, a link to the fundraiser if you have the means. 
Orta was not the only person to be targeted for filming the Garner murder either. Mm. As we reported last month, Taisha Allen also filmed the death of Eric Garner and is speaking out and saying that her involvement with the case has put her, uh, has made her a target on the, uh, put a target on her back with the NYPD. Not a surprise. Yeah. This is a criminal gang from top to bottom. They will do whatever it takes to uh, to defend their own. Yeah, I think that uh, oftentimes when you find the bigger cities, you'll find the more uh, corrupt departments. But I don't um, know if that's true. The it, not always. Um, I said oftentimes. Okay. So what you'll see is, uh, however. That uh, generally, when any department, um, police department, sees some kind of bad press, they'll close ranks to some extent. So even the best department, you're going to see this. Their transparency isn't what they excel at. Why should they? They get you're forced to fund them. More here, 855-450, freeze the toll-free number. I mean, I don't think there's anybody's going to take the side of, yeah, we should poison this guy. So, <laughs> What's the issue? You're welcome to comment on this. I mean, maybe you've got a situation with the police that you want to tell us about. Uh, obviously, you hear a lot about that, Derek J. on Wednesday nights when you host Cop Block Radio. There's no shortage of people that have similar stories of being harassed by the police. But oh, this is just yeah. the worst of the worst. It's crazy. It happens all the time. I, I guess the best thing that people can do if they are um, relatively free right now, if you're on the outside, is carry a video camera. Make sure you're always recording because if there were some cell phone audio or video of Orta being arrested, I'm sure that would have come out by now and it would have done something to prevent him from being in jail in the first place, maybe to say, hey, uh, this was an unlawful search. I never consented to this. Something. But do you think, Derek J., I mean, I agree with your advice, by the way. I think it's yeah. a good idea to have a video camera. I've got, if you've got you a said smartphone. always be recording. That's, uh, that's going to be difficult for people. Who said that? Derek J., just oh, now. Always be recording? You That's what he said. That. I didn't remember. You said Maybe. always be recording. He so must have misspoken because okay. okay. you're going to burn yeah. your battery down in like half a second. if you, Yeah, you that know. won't work. Um, there are some devices, however, Mark, that uh, are wearable. Like, yeah. It's almost like uh, those iPod Nano size things. It's about the size of maybe your thumb or a, mm -hmm. a quarter. And uh, it takes pictures on a relative... On a, um, regular basis every like seconds, every or minute every or second. something yeah it'll take a snapshot huh. of where you are and if you press it then it'll start recording uh, right. live video so there, there are there, solutions out there that, i wondered whether you meant it i wasn't you know i'm like really because derek j would know how to do this i've stuff. got Ben buser on my phone and i know you do as well derek j and it's literally i mean what what takes the most time is putting in the passcode on my phone otherwise it's you know one press on Ben buser the app loads up and then I hit the record button, and I'm, I'm streaming live. There's a notice that goes out to Facebook, so all of my friends can know what's happening. You have a similar situation set mm -hmm. up with your Bambuser. There's different networks that you can connect to, Twitter, etc. We'll come back with more recommendations. You can share your story, 855-450-FREE, and more about this if there is some. It's Free Talk Live. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. 
though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippie! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us toll free here at 855 450 free. Recording the police can be hazardous to your health, unfortunately, and that is the message they want to send. Uh, have you been scared away from doing it? I mean, there's this guy in prison now for recording the police in New York City when they were arresting Eric Garner, and now someone appears to be trying to poison him, or at the very least, the cell block in which he uh, is residing at the moment. We'll continue with, uh, of course, your calls if you make them at 855-450-FREE. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com, where you can get interactive, and if you want, you can support the show by shopping with us at shop.freetalklive.com. You enter Amazon through the links you'll find there, and Free Talk Live will get a cut of the sale. So I actually just uh, ordered something, uh, threw something actually on my wish list over to Amazon today. Um, I, I just love shopping at Amazon. They've got so much over there, so many great products, such such great deals, and you get the same great prices you're used to when you enter through our affiliate link over at shop.freetalklive.com. There are actually three links. There's one to Amazon Canada, one to Amazon UK, and one to Amazon US. So uh, please and thank you. Uh, go and do your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Now, Derek J., you're telling us about this uh, gentleman. What was his name again? I apologize. I don't have it in front of me. Orta is his last name. Uh, um, Ramsey is his first. Ramsey Orta. He is in uh, Rikers jail in new york and is currently on a hunger strike Mm -hmm. there's an update to this case that you just received directly from uh john vibes the author of the article here correct yes that's correct john vibes uh, who reported this story for the freethoughtproject.com reports to me that he is speaking with his family now and that they have uh received new hope because of the support that they're getting uh, for this story that That's the, nice. the news is spreading so far and wide uh, beyond their expectations and whereas before they felt pretty hopeless now they are turning over a new leaf now I suspect they did did they also uh, mention getting some extra financial support as well is that something that's that's been rolling in i don't know that hasn't been confirmed but okay. i would imagine Can we see the so. fundraiser yeah um, let me let me check on that and I'll report back to you. Excellent. So uh, you can share your thoughts here about the police. Looks actually pretty good now. I just clicked on the fundraiser. Twelve thousand out of their sixteen thousand dollar goal. All right. Uh, so well on the well on the way to success. 
there, yeah. and they've pulled that off already in under a month. And a lot of them, I'm looking at some of the most recent donations of the last 15 of them. Uh, the the least recent is 13 minutes ago. So you know, and the most recent is five minutes ago. I guess so it's a lot rolling of, in, huh? A lot of them are coming in right now. I'm gonna put the link up to that on our Facebook uh, and Twitter, so you can easily access it. I've already linked to the article, but I'll also put a direct link to the GoFundMe here. So if you would like to help Ramsey. Uh, hopefully he'll get out of this alive because right now it's looking pretty scary at the moment. And that's what they want, right? They want people to be intimidated. They want you to think twice about recording the police. So, Derek J., you're saying have an app on your phone, have a camera device, have something on you to where you can start recording at a moment's notice if you see the police abusing somebody. But isn't it the, the fact that the police want you to be afraid? That's why they're doing this. That's why they've targeted Ramsey. That's why they targeted the uh, the young lady who was also recording. They're targeting cameramen. They're attacking cameramen. They're stealing cameras. Shouldn't people be scared into silence and submission? Uh, that's up to them. That's their choice if they're going to be scared into silence and submission. I'm I'm not. Why I, aren't you scared? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid because uh, <laughs> I, I think – well, I've done a couple of things. Some people that, have accused you of that. There yeah. is a fine line <laughs> right. between bravery and stupidity. Yeah, <laughs> but I've done a couple of things to limit the, the risks involved in me recording the police. One thing is I moved to New Hampshire. Mm. So recording police in places like Los Angeles and New York City is a little more risky because those police officers have a history of – violence and getting away with it and uh in new hampshire that's just not the case in fact the opposite is true they've been trained by the activists <laughs> uh, to respect recordings and uh to a, a degree that i am just constantly amazed like yesterday there was an event called social sunday here in Keene, new hampshire and mm. a police officer made the mistake of uh, pulling someone over very close to uh -oh. a bunch of activists and oh i so, wasn't there for this part it must oh, have happened after i left yeah i'm sorry you missed it because about 12 activists poured out and were yeah. video recording within seconds of this man pu being pulled over the police officer you know not shaken or intimidated by the activists probably well Do you aware, know who was? annoyed. <laughs> no, I couldn't tell from a distance. Okay. So I knew one of them was one of the local police, Kevin Gina, but um, the other I couldn't identify. Either way, what's cool is the activists can pretty much surround a police officer <laughs> here in in Keene, and they don't even acknowledge that they didn't there yell, are Get video. Back! Right? No, you're they're within feet of stop this, resisting <laughs> this officer and this driver, and even some of the activists were going up to the driver who was the victim here and pulled over and uh, like uh, presumably consulting with him, letting him know you Excellent. know you have the right uh, to refuse a search. And uh, this man ended up getting away with just a warning. So in a lot of places, uh, it wouldn't play out the same way. I mean, we've seen right. to anyone that's watched enough cop block videos, copblock.org, great website. They report on police abuse and you know accountability issues all the time and they encourage people to record uh, videos as well but you know I remember a situation in Austin Texas where John Bush was threatened and I think ultimately arrested or his buddy was arrested for you know some cop just arbitrarily saying you got to get behind that pole over there or something you just didn't like that they were recording within a relative close uh, area and so just arbitrarily ordering them that pole uh, there to get away well, uh, it can be scary. I mean, I've been arrested for video recording. Um, you have been. Yep. Uh, James Cleveland, another activist. I don't know if I've ever been arrested for video recording. Oh, uh, I've well, been arrested for a lot of things. It seems like but... you would have been. But <laughs> yeah, I know you've certainly tried. <laughs> Dave Ridley has been arrested for video yeah. recording. Many activists in, in Keene and the New Hampshire area have been. I've been threatened for it, for sure. But once it's over, once you go through the charges in jail, even if you're found guilty or if they're thrown out, once it's over, it's like, well, that wasn't so scary. I feel like you could do that again. Sure. You know, Your for this guy. Your ga uh, confidence gains. Yeah, Ramsey Orta, you know, he's in a bad situation right now. He's in prison. He's worried for his life and his health. But when it's over, I'm sure he's not going to be intimidated and threatened to not video record the police ever again. If anything, he's probably emboldened by this. He's going to record them more often. Yeah, that's true. There's a certain personality type who uh, does not react in the way that the police want with their intimidating tactics. Another tactic they'll, they'll use is to claim they are scared of your camera, that they think it is a gun. Yeah, this so, is ridiculous. When you're talking <laughs> about smartphones, which are about... Uh, you know what maybe a quarter inch tops thick yeah. um, you can't fit a bullet in there 
Right. And I've never heard a New Hampshire cop make that claim before, but uh, we did have our friend James Cleveland, who was the, he was played with the, the you need to move back move, where uh, the state police told him at a scene, which was a, actually turned out to be a suicide scene, but they'd called out the Bearcat and the SWAT team and all that. And James, one of his mistakes was he was alone, so he didn't have two or three or a dozen people nearby to back him up, and I think that's right. a huge factor in this. But so it's not to say New Hampshire is perfect. It's just generally a safer place to record the police. Yeah. The people in this case, um, one of they were mostly state police. They don't have the same level of experience as like the keen uh, the keen city cops do with dealing with activists. But certainly the state police know who many of us are, and they know that we're out there. The state uh, police are still, um, to some extent, of the mind that they can use brute force against the activists and have some kind of good result. Well, they got, he was found guilty. That's the first uh, uh, you know sort of thought process behind the police is we'll just stop this by arrest them at some point or another the sheer number the sheer volume of situations yeah. like we have to have another uh, approach but i'd like to point out and i think this is really important is, is this is illegal as hell what, what is the cops uh choosing to arrest people for filming looked uh, illegal public or, service. it looks illegal but a, a judge found james guilty no um he did so he it have looks a, legal from their perspective did he have a lawyer no, he did not. Yeah, it's always tough. The lawyer, even if he had a lawyer, it wouldn't have necessarily saved him. I mean, Derek J., but you that's had on the, the local best, level too. You had the best gun attorney in the state, uh, Evan Knappen, in your case, and you were still found uh, responsible or whatever. I don't know what it wasn't guilty. It was like you were still found that you shouldn't be able to have a concealed weapon in your case uh, by the by the judge. So only in the, the fact sound. that you had a fancy attorney didn't help you. Yeah. But let's not forget that uh, this is on the local level. You yeah. get, it's rare that you get actual justice in, at the district court level. Um, you usually have to take it up the line. James and is appealing. He's going to a jury trial next. The, the, the circuit courts uh, have ruled uh, over and over again that it is legal to film a public servant on public property doing the public's will while they're getting paid public money. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. I'm going to post this GoFundMe here in just a moment on our Facebook and Twitter. You can access both of those by going to news.freetalklive.com and share your thoughts about police interactions, recording the cops, maybe share an experience you've had. 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins. Stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour. Stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar! That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media, or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. 
Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com, advancing the ideas of liberty daily. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live in the remaining moments, which is uh, what we're in right now. You still have time to get your thoughts on the air. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We're talking about recording the cops. Yeah, and earlier we were talking about people's ability to be recording at all times. And I know that's really difficult, but one of the most likely times that you'll interact with police is on the road. Mm. And it's very easy to be recording while you're on the road because dash cams are becoming more and more... Uh, affordable and available. Freedomcam.net. Uh, you even mentioned uh, Amazon has a, a there's an affiliate link for um, Free Talk Live. That's right. And, At uh, shop.freetalklive.com. And uh, I was just perusing uh, there myself and and purchased a, a dash cam um, through Amazon and uh, through M- Free Talk Live's affiliate link. So. I think that is something that people can do today that will increase their freedom, make them feel hopefully a, a lot safer. It's like an insurance policy almost, because not only does it help protect you against the police and their abuse, but it can also help you out in an accident, because you know, those things are recording at all times. Sure. And so you could you know, prove that you were in the right uh, in an accident with this thing. In some places, it'll even lower your insurance rates. So wow, get a dash cam. It gives you more freedom, and there's no reason not to. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. And also, but how, you know, if you do have a smartphone as well, you should have an instant streaming app like Bambuser on there. It's B A M B U S E R. It's free to download and easy to install. Just I, what I've got is I've got the icon on my homepage on my phone. So I just have to hit the home button. If I'm in any other app, I just hit the home button and it takes me right to my homepage. And then I can start up Bambuser from there. It's literally two to three presses at, at most before I'm recording live to the internet. I was able to do that just two days ago. I was pulled over here in New Hampshire and uh, was left with a warning after live streaming an interaction with a law enforcer there who lied about me, uh, about my speed. No. Yeah, uh, f- go figure, a, a cop lying. But it really, you know, it happened. And uh, I knew for a fact that I wasn't going over the speed limit. He mm-hmm. lied. And then he left me off with a warning. Which Why was do you so think nice he did that? Because I was video recording him. No, no. Why do you think he uh, would have lied about your speed? I don't know. Because cops lie. Um, to is... give me a ticket because okay. I, I wouldn't have to object. Here's the, how he phrases it. Yes, it was a state police. Okay, place. so state police are the only organization that you can make an argument actually get the funding from the tickets here in yeah, New Hampshire. that's true. Because this is really important, and I think one of the the best things about New Hampshire local leases is, is they don't get the money for the that's tickets. That's true. They're more the, likely to give a warning as a result of that. Right. The state police are less likely because they actually do collect and benefit, so it's actually a surprise that the state did not give you a ticket. So here's what he said. I clocked you going 72, and this is a 55. Mm. Why were you going so fast? I said, I don't answer questions. (laughs) All right, I'll be right back. 
<laughs> so he went back to his uh, little thing, probably looked up my license and read, yep. found everything's fine, and then uh, came back with just a warning. And I think the reason is because he expected me to walk into his trap of confirming that I was speeding. Uh, right. Like he's setting up this scenario, asking me why I was speeding, and Most then if I answer in the affirmative, that. yeah, then uh, I'm going to be admitting guilt here. Even if I didn't speed, I'll still be admitting guilt with him, and I don't want to do that on or off camera, so I certainly wasn't going to answer his question. Well, here in New Hampshire, they still have radar as opposed to LIDAR, and this is a less uh, precise form of measurement as far as speeds go. Um, he could have clocked somebody uh, near you, something, you know, sometimes vibrations will set it off, um, you know, street lights and dragonflies and a variety of other things out there um, that will, will set them off. So it could be that he was mistaken as opposed to lying, but it's interesting that he gave you a, a warning. I'd say it's more likely he was lying about it. Let's go to Tony on the south shore of New Jersey. Tony, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. How you doing? Hey, Tony. Hey. Go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, my thing is that the young kids today uh, are not really having real childhood like I did. Mm. I wasn't interested in economy at nine years old. I could care less about right. that. Right. Interested in what? Money. Economy. But in yeah, the economy? I mean, these kids today, if you have a conversation with a kid today, it's like talking to an adult. Really? There's They're talking no about sense. the economy? That's interesting. I don't. I guess I don't talk to many kids, so. Well, uh, next time you engage in a conversation with a kid, he'll play mental checkmate with you because he's like an adult. He, he, you can't. They can have a conversation with you, but there's no childhood. You know, when I was a kid, I wasn't interested in logical way of thinking. The crazy. Well, this doesn't I was, sound like a bad happy. thing to me. I mean, for kids to be interested in the in economics, uh, in logic. I mean, to me, that's this sounds it's desirable. My op- it's what about the aesthetic mentality? It's myopic. You're supposed to be interested in beauty. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, you know how long the day was for me like an eternity. It never ended. But a kid today is so structured, so regimented, we have an inflexible mentality, and our culture Hmm. makes people rigid, militant, and regimented. That's not a healthy way for a young kid to develop a balanced mentality. I agree that there can be way too many classes for kids. Um, I think it can be difficult to sort of find balance um, in this because parents want kids to have, you know, different skill sets. Uh, There's, you know, no time like the present to learn them. Many times kids want these classes um, and and that sort of thing. Like, for instance, my son, uh, he has some classes that we, you know, we'd like him to go to. He seems to have some interest in going to them. So, you know, there's some level of regimentation. Um, But, I mean, any, any amount of class, are there any amount of classes that are acceptable? But how old is he? He's seven. Okay, at seven years old, he should be living in a world that you cannot live in, where he could explore all his incongruent ideas, as crazy as they are, because that's who makes him who he's going to become, that kind of incongruent thinking, which has nothing to do with logic. It has to do with playing. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, so... The longer the kid can play in those worlds of fantasy, he's going to have plenty of time to get a decimal point in his head. But we want the kids for upward social mobility. We start training them too early, and they they lose that magic of make-believe. It's so important for a young mind. You see this, Mark? I mean, you're the one here with a kid. I mean, you've got a seven-year-old son. He is homeschooled and unschooled, so maybe you know he's not really. He gets a lot of this time that uh, the caller is talking about. I, the fan- fantasy time, you mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, he has plenty of time to sort of play on his own and, and that sort of thing. And then when you know when he gets an opportunity to play with friends, usually it's play dates. At this point, does he's, he strike you as a logical economist when you talk? No, to him by sometimes? no means. Uh, <laughs> you know, no. He has no clue what uh, economics looks like. But I mean, you know, he's seven. I'm. But he plays with other kids. Do you see that with them? I mean, is Tony like totally blowing this way out of proportion? I don't know. I don't well, know. I think that there are a lot there. 
there's a certain amount of kids out there that have so many classes, whether it's uh, taekwondo and mm -hmm. then off to piano mm -hmm. and then off to this and that and the other, that they, they spend their lives in a class or in the car structured. and then they collapse structured. into bed. Mm -hmm. they're, they're so structured. Everything is structured. When I played as a kid, nobody supervised me. In fact, if an adult came and we'd say, hey, hey, mister, we're playing a game. Yeah, you're not in our club. Get lost, buddy. We made our no, I think I think I'm up. understanding a little bit more of what you're saying right now. Like, it sounds to me like you're describing what has been called helicopter parenting, where the, uh -huh. the, the parent sort of hovers over their child and is constantly, you know, monitoring it uh, and making sure that the child is as safe as possible and is wearing all their safety equipment and they're not talking right. to the wrong people and, you know, that kind of thing. Always worried. And the, the helicopter parenting thing uh, became a term in reference to college students where parents were going and doing this helicoptering at college, where they would uh, call yeah. up the teachers if their son or daughter received a bad test grade or something like that and, you know, berate the teacher on the phone or, uh, or attend a job interview with their, with their college-age son or daughter. I mean, this is like, <laughs> no, seriously, this happens. And, uh, and so yeah. I think I, I see where you're coming from, but it's more of a parenting problem than parking? anything else, right? Have you noticed parking lots? Everybody has to park the car with the nose of the car in the same direction. If you park in the opposite direction, you're like a renegade. You park the wrong way. Everything is uniform, uniform, mm, uniform. Yeah. No, backing in is really? the only right way to park. Yeah, I actually. agree with that. It's way easier to get out that I'm way. No Tony, back, I'm Tony, not, I'm, not a backer in it. Nose first for me. I'm with you on a lot of what you said there. Thanks for the call tonight. I think that what he's observing, though, is a, is parenting issues. Not necessarily that it's the kids or even necessarily the schools, but the, the parents. When it comes to parking, there's nothing but like the pull through. Uh, I mean, this really awesome is when you can get... That, right, then you, know, you go front in, but then you go front out, right? Right, you're, 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 your nose out because you've managed to pull all the way through. That is the best that way is to the park. Best one, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I do that as often as I possibly can. Derek J., you're not, you're not a fan of the pull through? <laughs> Come on! Yeah, this, I did that this morning. <laughs> all right, we'll uh, see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at thederekj.com and freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. 
From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, April 6th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.10 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,219 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $258. Antiwar.com reports, talking to the major American networks yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continued railing against the Iran nuclear framework deal and reiterated his determination to try to kill it. Netanyahu has repeatedly talked up sabotaging the nuclear negotiation on Israeli media, but this was the first time he was so overt about leading the anti-diplomacy push on U.S. media. He tried to present the push against the current deal as a push for a better deal, though that hypothetical deal that Netanyahu might accept is so far-fetched, U.S. officials say it wasn't even worth bringing up at the talks to the Western nations, let alone Iran. As it stands, however, Israel appears to be inconsolably outraged about the deal and is gearing up its powerful lobby to another run at the U.S. Congress with an eye towards getting legislation passed that would effectively sabotage the ongoing talks towards a final deal. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports Tesla Motors announced it broke a company record for the first quarter of 2015 by delivering 10,030 vehicles soon after West Virginia banned sales of its vehicles. The record was broken through a 55% sales increase for the same period from the previous year. Tesla also announced it will deliver sales information three days after the end of each quarter instead of waiting 40 days when the company is required to file them to the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission. The company expects to sell 50 55,000 cars in 2015, up from the 31,000 vehicles they delivered the previous year. Tesla has had trouble turning a profit in previous years, losing $294 million last year, $74 million in 2013, and $396 million in 2012. Tesla's first quarter financial report should be filed in May. Additionally, direct sales of Tesla vehicles were banned in West Virginia on Friday by Governor Earl Ray Tomlin after he signed a bill into law that stated an automaker may not act in the capacity of a new motor vehicle dealer. Tesla is banned from selling its vehicles directly in at least four other states. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Rolling Stone magazine failed to follow basic journalistic safeguards in publishing a since-retracted story about the alleged gang rape at a University of Virginia frat house. In its lengthy critique of the article conducted at the request of the magazine, the Columbia Journal Review said Rolling Stone's repudiation of the main narrative in A Rape on Campus is a story of journalistic failure that was avoidable. The 